what his face is. The cipher's live. Hey. Ozman collects. He's hosting dives uh. through digital realms with shows at five. Web B. Read Marvel. The narrative thrives. Weekends we speak with Josh and Strides. We collect is going digital. We coincide. Digital. Sweet stakes handouts for those who abide. Great collecting space news. We never miss God. Be chill. Kick back. Geek modes. Yeah. Kick off. Flips the comics. The spectrum loads. Test, test, one, three, test. Let's get some animation music going on here. There we go. Oh, everyone's, everyone's rolling in. Lovely. So you pride love it. Say, Josh, how are you, mate? I hope I'm coming through okay, nice and clear. So if I'm not, let me know. <clears throat> and I will uh, do my best to uh, sort it out. Sorry, guys, I'm still just getting myself together here. So running a little bit behind because, you know, life and kids and all that other fun stuff. Hey, Guri's in the house. Guri, how are you, sir? So, thanks for dropping in. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations on picking up uh, that uh, that Borg. I believe we're up to what number? I want to say fifty-two. That's that right? Uh, no, fifty-one. That's close. And say so, Borg fifty-one in the bag. Good stuff. Hey, doctors in the house as well. Hey, all the cool kids are here. All right, let's uh, let's get some speakers up here. Let's get some co-hosts and etc. Cetera's, etc. Cetera's. All right, I've got a few things to talk about this evening, this morning, this afternoon. So loads going on in the spaces. Also, are you uh, are you on the the, the the Pokemon train at the moment? Because uh, I know I am, and it seems like the rest of the community. But we'll, we'll talk a bit about that. Got a bit going on over on VV. Got a bit going on the just collective spaces in general. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> All right, you there, Josh. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mate. My bad. I was a little uh, behind schedule myself. I was grabbing my coffee, but I'm here. Oh, I was going to say, you were playing Fortnite, weren't you? <laughs> uh, I was, but I got off that early I uh, about 10 minutes ago. You know, I was trying yeah. to be on time, but I was still late. So, yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good, mate. I know I, I, I was just scratching myself. I know, buddy, <clears throat> kids being kids and like, you know, life. <laughs> but we're here. We made it and we're, we're, we're ready to rock and roll. Can I ask you a question before you do the intro? Because I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna forget this. Oh, go for it. Um, you said on the 18th for Vegas, you're doing the Hoover trip. Uh, I believe that is correct. Let me just double check that. Uh, the 18th. Uh, no, the 18th. I am doing 18th, 17th, 17th. No, the 17th. I'm doing the um the Grand Canyon, and the Hoover Dam is going to be on the 12th. Oh, okay. No way. Oh, well, sorry. No, no, no. Sorry, I, I got that wrong. I'm looking at the wrong calendar. So the 12th, no, the Hoover Dam is going to be on the 14th. My bad. So that's going to be on the Thursday, the 14th of November. Oh, I thought you said you were going somewhere on the 18th. The 18th uh, was close. Uh, on the 19th, I'm going to be going to the Grand Canyon. Oh, okay, scratch my question. Never mind. Do your intro. But was it going to be like, can I come too? <laughs> yeah, well, I I because I couldn't remember what my flight times were, but I fly out late on the 18th, like 1030 at night. So... Uh, okay. much on the, the whole day i thought you were doing that trip on the 18th so no i know i was on the on, on the 19th but uh you know uh, I, we, we, we maybe we can uh we, we can cancel and reschedule and do stuff maybe, maybe we make something happen anyway we'll, no, uh, no 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 i'm not that's... that important <laughs> not important at all what am i saying important important at all ha say i say not say well, you're you're my fellow co-host on this channel which makes you very very important and on that note, let's uh, let's just get into it. So if I find this, uh, da, 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 da. all right, this is uh, let's get into it. Uh, courtesy of uh, Doctor Strange. Spaces, the cipher's live. Hey. Ozman collects, he's hosting dives. Uh -huh. Digital realms with shows at five. Web B, we marvel, the narrative thrives. Weekends, we speak with Josh and Strides. We collect this going digital, we coincide. Digital sweet shakes, handouts for those who abide. Great collective space news, we never miss God. Be chill, kick back, eat bones, kick off, flips the comics, the spectrum loads. All 
All right. Okay, yeah, everybody. Osmond Collect 63 here. We're back again with a where we're up to now. Web V Weekends episode 53. Look at that. It's 53. We made it. We're still here and we're still going strong. And uh, for anyone who's uh, joining us for the first time, uh, thank you so much for, for tuning in. Uh, for anyone who's uh, returning back, I see all the cool kids in the house. I see uh, Dr. Strange is with us. Inano D, Fried Labbits, always a big supporter of the channel. Always a pleasure to see you. Guru's there in the background as well. I did see that uh, comment that Guru put there as well on the 14th. Yep, he's very, very correct because I was looking at the wrong calendar because I am silly. Duck and Covers listening there in the background as well. Good to, he good to hear from you, mate. So hopefully uh, you're able, able to jump up and speak if you're able to. Uh, Sven's there in the background as well. So Shawnee Pooh, Death Bunny. Benny Lee and all the oh, all the oh I see Captain Obvious there in the background as well. Fantastic! Everyone's here. All the cool kids are here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, for anyone who's joining us for the first time, you're wondering what what is WebV Weekends? What are we all about? Well, basically, we're just a nice uh, chilled collector's collector's corner just now. A lovely little space here where we talk all things. Uh, basically, uh, all all the, for the fun nerdy stuff. Like we talk about collecting, we talk about film, we talk about fandom. Uh, or we'll cover physical, digital, Marvel, DC. Uh, what's we got there? We've got uh, Disney, Star Wars, all all sorts of fun stuff. And uh, I'm also joined by my my fellow uh, co-host, uh, content creator, and good friend uh, Josh. Collector's gone digital. Josh, how are you, sir? I am doing well. Thank you for the intro. <laughs> how's things, mate? How's your how, how's your weekend been so far? Uh, it's been pretty good. Um, man, I, I'm realizing every single time we host this, sh this show, just how boring I am. Cause I keep saying the same thing, just client work and, and some Fortnite with Sven right now. But, um, no, other than that, uh, I, I did have the, uh, the interview with Ben, which I think went, went fairly well. Um, and yeah, nothing else really. No, very good. Yeah, I mean that was definitely one of the the the, the top of my talking points. Is uh, first of all, a big uh, con congratulations to you on that one. Yeah, it looked like it was a fantastic interview. Um, yeah, the, Ben uh, seemed like he answered all your questions, and and uh, yeah, it, was, it seemed like a very uh, very easy to talk to. Yeah, I went. Uh, well, I keep saying to people, the thirty minutes went by so freaking fast, dude. I got off the call and I was stressed, and I was like, "Oh, did I get enough? I don't think I did." <laughs> so, yeah, um, well, no, it's it's hopefully going to be the first of many, though. So, um, I think it was a good start. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm not sure if you caught it or not, but actually, um, uh, last uh, last on the. Uh, Webby Wednesday show. Uh, ben actually dropped into our space like literally like a couple minutes after you dropped off. After I dropped off. Oh, when mm. I was up on on stage. Yeah, when you were up on stage, like you know, we um, we had a, a few other uh, guest speakers come up and uh, and then uh, they were asking questions, like actually asking really technical questions about like you know about uh, all sorts of stuff that I I didn't feel qualified to answer at all. But uh, luckily enough, uh, Ben Rose was uh, listening and came in and, and swooped in and saved the day. So it was, <laughs> I was like, oh, thank God, someone who knows more than I do. So, yep, take it. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. I did not know that. I will have to listen to that back. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you, you should have heard, like, you know, like, there's doctors listening there as well. Like, you know, we were both like, oh, 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 crap, it's Ben. <laughs> what do we do? It's like, let him in, let him in. <laughs> what, like, you say technical questions, like, what kind of questions about, uh, like, Omi yep. or the I don't know he's, he's basically asking about that because uh, it's uh, uh, another uh, content creator out there in the space. He uh, specializes more like on OpenSea uh, dreams. Uh, he he goes by. I've actually seen him uh, popping up in the in the XP a couple of times now. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, re really uh, in, really a uh, good good fellow. Great to talk to. And uh, yeah, Ben was actually kind enough to answer all, all of his questions along with a few other uh, speakers as well. That's cool. I'm gonna listen to that back. Yeah, yeah definitely listen to that that one back. But yeah, but um, other than that, like you know, I'm sorry you've actually pumped because uh, one of the big things you got coming up very very soon is Vegas, baby. That is coming up very very soon. Yeah, I was just looking at the uh, calendar. That's, I mean, uh, is it technically next week? I guess it is. I, I suppose cool. like technically it's next week. Like, I'm I'm looking at my calendar too, going, oh, I, I got to get my bits and pieces together because it's still like one or two things. <laughs> I was like, damn, yeah. this thing's moving up fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, before you know it, we're going to be there. But yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it, man. I want to, like I said, start in this space. I want to try and make some some trips outside of Decon as well to like Hoover, uh, Grand Canyon. So I'll find time for that. But I think that would be a lot of fun too. Yeah, but well, um, yeah, like uh, like I'm I'm sure we still I'm sure we 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 can make something happen. So we'll we'll, we'll definitely make something happen. Cool. Yeah, very very cool. 
Uh, so yeah, so yeah, so we got Vegas coming up soon. So everyone's super super pumped for that one. So I know there's um a, a lot of big things are going to be happening on the day. So hopefully, uh, if you are going, uh, fantastic. If if you're not, hopefully, uh, you can uh live through the experience uh, through all of us uh out there. And we'll, I'm sure there'll be like pictures and videos and all sorts of stuff out there on the spaces. But yeah, it's going to be a good time, and I'm really really looking forward to uh just us meeting everybody and just uh have have a good time and, and experiencing uh, America for the first time. Hundred percent. And actually, speaking of decoy, did you guys see the uh, Matt Gondek, uh, his post? Uh, I did not. No. What huh? What did he post? Uh, so he he put out a post of just some work that he was well, something he was working on. It wasn't like the full uh, full collectible or anything. It was just like a a, a close up shot. But it was uh, he tagged decon in it. So I don't think he said Vegas decon, but I'm assuming it's probably going to be that one. So he might be dropping something with uh, with a BV because he also tagged BV in it. Ooh, so speculation, ladies and gentlemen, I like it. Here, I'll put it to the top. Yeah, do it. It's like this. It's like, it's like speculation. <laughs> um, but no, I didn't see that one. Um, I I did notice that um the the L- 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 yeah, the London police are going. Uh, so that's a that that's going to be a good to see. Uh, and yeah, a whole heap of other people I'm not familiar with, but uh, definitely looking forward to uh, to checking out. Oh, here it is. What is it for designer con? Let's have a look here. So it's it's it looks like it's a an actual collectible. Um, or sorry, I say collectible. I mean like because he's done like art artwork before, but mm. um, it looks like a three D piece. So it says, "What is this? Is this for designer con? Is this for V official? <laughs> WTF does Omi mean? <laughs> I like that. Okay, cool. We'll have to see what we'll have to see how, what 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 comes of that. I don't know if you see at the top of the image there, like the claw. Or yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just trying, just trying to have a look now. Yes, it's a very, uh, oh yeah, yeah I, I, I see the claw. Okay. Any more, so, yeah, any more of his work, I'm all for it because he's one of my favorite artists I've come across through VV. London Police too, actually. So I'm glad you mm-hmm. mentioned they're coming to VV. I did not know that. Um, definitely gonna get some other stuff, but I mm. think his his his, uh, his piece is awesome. Yeah, well, I so like they've they've got their uh, their busy, they've got their pieces on VV already. Um, yeah, they're they're gonna be there at uh, Decon. Apparently, they're gonna have a very uh, nice, uh, comfy uh, couch there to to chill out in, in their booth and 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 interact with them so that's uh, definitely a nice little plus if you just want to if you just wanted somewhere just to sit down and chill out from being overwhelmed by probably all the uh, awesome uh, artwork and and all sorts of cool stuff that's going to be there you can just go and chill with them for a bit yeah, i'm definitely gonna have to do that mm. but yeah so uh, yeah so we've got that coming up uh well yeah slide so next week so yeah that's gonna be exciting stuff um what else has been happening so lately so let's uh, let's let's go with the more like current events. So what have we had today? We had the the Finding Nemo drop on on VV. Um, Josh, did you end up going for any of it? Fail. I joined the waitlist. Forgot to click buy now. Oh <laughs> uh, no! Wait, 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 I, 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 uh, where is it? That one. <laughs> I was in a space earlier too, and they were reminding me. They're like, "Go for the drop." So I joined the waitlist. I set a, a, an alarm and everything. The alarm even went off, and I just forgot to. Yeah, my fault. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No for me though. So, um, well, it's a. Uh, I tell you what, uh, yeah, because it looks like uh, the last I looked is uh, it's not sold out. So uh, there's still a uh, plenty of plenty of opportunities to, to go pick some up, and you know what? we we haven't, haven't done this for a little while, so let's uh, let's uh, head over to the V market and see what these things are trading for. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, if I can, ah, there it is. Let's go shopping. <laughs> Always such a fun tune. All right, let's head over to the VV market and let's see. Uh, let's see what the how the the, the Nemo drop is going. Uh, also, did you go for the um uh, the the Mighty drop? Uh, the the bin, is it the the Strange Tales drop with all Morbius and Moon Knight and all that that jazz as well? Uh, I didn't go for the drop mainly because the the one that I want most is is just the the Moon Knight, which is like one of the most common ones. So I'm just grabbing mm. in the market, but 
Well, let's uh, let's have a look here. So let's start with the the Finding Nemo one. So we've got the coral reef. Apparently, is going for do 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 do. So it's a common that is currently on the floor for uh, two gems and sixty frags. So very very affordable. Uh, what was what was the drop price on this again? Was it fifteen? I want to say it's fifteen. On oh, sorry, which one? The Nemo or the Nemo? Oh, yeah, Nemo. Nemo. I think it was twenty-two. I think. Oh, ah, sorry, it's twenty-two. That's right. Yeah, so coral reef is uh, definitely uh, well, well, well below box. Uh, we also got crush. Crush is currently going for five gems and fifty frags. So again, very, very affordable. Uh, we the diving helmet. Our ultra bear is going for ten gems on the floor. So all of them very, very uh, within uh, affordable range. Uh, what have we got here? What else is in that drop? We had Dory. Where's Dory at? Dory is not on my screen. But it seems like uh, if you land the, the, the Nemo, you, you're probably uh, doing all right. Yeah, I haven't. I To be honest, I haven't kept up with that drop too much uh, so far. I was just trying to invite Sven up to stage because I know he has some opinions about this. But Oh, okay. I love it. <laughs> I guess, uh, if if you're listening for the first time or coming back again, you, you know the deal. If you uh, if you want to come up to the stage at any point during the show, uh, you just want to come up, say hi, tune in on the on the conversation, or just looking for confidence to speak in a space for the first time. Uh, that's what these spaces are all about. We're, we we uh, encourage everyone to to come up, say uh, share your opinions, and just uh, have a go. If you're just thinking about speaking speaking in a space for the first time, this is the place to do it. Um, as long as you're kind and courteous and uh, and not a not a dick, as uh, as D likes to always uh, remind us. Um, you're, you're more than welcome to, but at the same time, if you don't want to come up, that's totally cool as well. You can, you can always write something in the in, in the comments here, and I always try and do my best to um to, to, to read them out when and where I can. And uh, but yeah, at, at the same time, if you just want a little, just want to listen in the background, chill. Uh, totally, totally cool as well. Sven is like Beetlejuice. You just got to say his name three times at least. He's there. <laughs> That's the comment here from Double Quilts. I thought it was going to be at 1.30. I'm so confused. Yes, that is another point. Uh, the uh, I believe the clocks uh, over in, in uh, uh, the US have changed. So, uh, yeah, guys, uh, apparently we're, we're back to normal times now. So, um, yeah, last week uh, I had to sort of readjust things a little bit because of you know, time travel, but I think we're, we're back on track now. So, uh, again, uh, sorry, I do apologize if there's any uh, confusion for the for the times. But you know that's a that's 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 time travel for you, Sven. How are you, Sven? Yeah, yeah, I, I I'm doing quite well. Well, <laughs> but I I'm doing I'm well. On maybe, uh, <laughs> I'm on maybe a, a complaining day today. <laughs> oh no! Well, I got, just for complain. Oh, here I found Dory. So Dory is our rare, and that's currently going for twenty gems and ninety nine frags. So doing a little bit better. And but let me find Nemo. So. Sven, what's what's on your mind, mate? What what are we complaining about? What's up? What's yeah, up, yeah. upset for, you, sir? For me, for me, it's a bit too low in the market. Those things, uh, the diorama, two gems. So ah, people steel. are are flowing, flooring it for two gems. It's 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 getting me a bit insane or a bit mad. And um, the the other one, the other pieces are very low too. The turtle, come on, you you hyped up the turtle so much. It is like four <laughs> five gems. Wait, 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 let, let me play with this, <clears throat> oh, dude. It's like five gems and fifty frags, man. Like, come on, buy me. <laughs> I'm here. Need, buy me now. <laughs> do we need to stack on turtles now? How how many turtles are there? <laughs> <laughs> so you can start stacking the turtles. I so I, I only had six gems left, so I was happy. Okay, I got myself a turtle and I got myself a diorama. But yesterday I, I went in uh, hard on the on the collectibles on the on the mighties, and that's maybe oh, yeah. uh, the reason why 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 I am a bit salty because I <laughs> I did land any anything good. Oh, uh, it's like oh no, hang on. Uh, yeah. Oh, do I have it on this one? No, I don't think I do. I got gas. <sighs> And I've got uh, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. but I would would like to incentivize the community that if they go for a drop like for the Mighties, maybe it's an idea to if you don't lend it lend anything good, just do not sell it immediately for ten times less the price that you've bought it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 
incentivize the community to do this. <laughs> just, <laughs> just hold on to it and just keep it and collect the MCP points and just hold on to it. <laughs> mm. uh, oh, here we go. I've got uh, Nemo. Here we go. So Nemo, Nemo is currently going at 550 gems on the floor. So there you go. So if you if you land yourself a Nemo, yeah, you're not you're not doing too bad. Yeah, keeping in mind though, keeping in mind, there's 34 still left, so there's actually a, a good chunk of them still in the in the store. That's very true. Yeah, that's very true. Yes, there's 35 in the store. Yeah, but but how many commons are there in the store? Of the commons, right now, according to my screen, there is 730 of the commons, and there is 147 on the market as we speak. So that's less than 10 percent chance. Hmm. Five percent. Oh, look at poor Crush. Oh, dude, come on. There's like 574 of me left in the store. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, whoa. That's like, whoa. And like, whoa. I, 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 today, I, I feel like a bit of a rent, rent moment, like the, the moment where my collectibles started shouting to the community <laughs> that they should stop <laughs> selling their Eye of Okamoto for, <laughs> for the. I, 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 <laughs> I see. This is like like rant with Sven. I like it. <laughs> yeah, and then then uh, I um, I um, did uh, discuss it a bit with uh, uh, Josh. Um, there was an interview with uh, Figbin and Randy Chavez, and uh, the Figbin CEO told uh, uh, Randy, "Van, okay, it's it's a good thing that we sell like five five thousand or six thousand items." But the second most important thing is that these things keep their value so that customers keep on buying them because if everything loses value in a second, um, it's it's not a good thing for, for the, the the customers too. Mm. Yeah, I suppose it's like a bit of like a de deterrent, isn't it? Yeah, that that at that moment everything came together. Everything comes together now. <laughs> yeah, right. But on that note as well, actually, just uh, speaking of the Marvel Mighties, I wonder, the, wonder what they're going for now. Let's, uh, let's let's check out some of them. So I know that uh, if you landed either Mephisto or the Ghost Rider, I think uh, you're not doing too bad, but I'm saying that you had to burn everything to get the Ghost Rider. By the way, just before you, you hop into the prices, have you gotten any uh, Fidge pins yourself? Or <laughs> have you have you considered, because like, I, I I was looking at grabbing some Funkos and then now I'm I'm more interested in just the pins, so I'm collecting more of those. But um, have you considered grabbing some yourself? Me? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Um, though I do actually have one on the way uh, at the moment because I was actually lucky enough to uh, to uh, win one on um, uh, live on uh, Randy's uh, stream with uh, uh, Mr. MC One. Very nice. Yeah, it might be a uh, might be something to look at. Just because I know you said that you got to keep your Funkos high up so your your kids don't ruin them. I feel like the pins are a little harder to do that and you can kind of just like pin them on a board higher up you know so mm. <laughs> that's a good point actually or, i didn't think of that or or pin them into your child's shoulder if if he he abuses it too much <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like, like you know if he's six foot tall yeah <laughs> that's it or just like they pin it like on his chest but like like it goes like right down like you know there's a pin Uh, but uh, let's see. So, Marvel Mighty. So, we got Werewolf by Night. Uh, it's our uncommon. Just the first one popped off my screen. So, that's going for three gems and 45 frags. So, again, another low one. Oh, here's Man Thing. Man Thing's going for four gems and 98 frags. And what else have we got here? Uh, where's the rest of them going? Now, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. Where's drops? Drops. Layers drop cell work. So I think uh, Mephisto was going for about 200 gems last time I looked, so that's uh, that's not too bad. Let me have a look here. By the way, what was the interactive feature on that? Do we know? Oh, it was uh, basically the, the the flame just sort of like glimmers a little bit in the uh, in the light. Oh, they see they gotta get the tags right. That's not interactive. That's animated. Interactive <laughs> is like what the ant end was. Yeah, it's like the the, the like the swapping of the head. Yeah. I don't, wow, okay. That caught me off. So I'm just trying to find it in the market here. All right, here we go. Okay, so Moon Knight's going for two gems and 80 frags. So again, very, very affordable. 
Uh, who was Elsa Bloodstone? Was another one, wasn't it? Elsa Bloodstone. So I was hoping that it would come to the top of my search and I actually got to write it in. Bloodstone. Here we go. So there's 45 available on the market and Elsa Bloodstone is going for 15 gems and 50 frags. And last but not least, Mephisto. Mephisto is going for 190 gems on the floor. So, yeah, so they're all basically like around the same sort of average price. So out of all the sets that we have on the app now, how do you like that compared to what we already have? Are you a big fan of the set or you prefer something like the, the Spider-Man set? Oh, well, like the, the the Marvel Mighty set? Mm-hmm. Mm, I don't know. Me, me personally, I've never really sort of been like that into the, like the sort of the, the, the Marvel Mighties. I mean, I, I do, I, I do own like, you know, I, I kind of like a handful of them, but um, I, I guess I'm just not really like a massive sort of set person. I mean, like, cause I, I'm more into like, you know, the, like the single set type things, which is just easy for like MCP points and stuff like that. But I think probably, probably my favorite one <laughs> to, to, to no surprise, my favorite one is probably um the, the Thanos copter. Oh, right. <laughs> because like, I literally can't the jump with my Thanos yeah. copter. I always forget about the, uh, yeah, like the single ones. That was a single one, right? Or that was, was a single one, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that was actually one of the ones that got burnt recently as well. Right, right. I'm just trying to pull up all the series, but for me, for me, I like the the Iron Man and the Warhammer the most. That's the most. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the War Machine. Yeah, I gotta say, yeah. I think the Venomized Mighties are, are top of the list for me. I think those look amazing. They are very, very cool. But I know. Let us out there. Let, let us know out there in the in, in the audience. Uh, how's uh, which Marvel Mighties are you into? Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm just uh, looking at a few notes here. I just got a um, uh, just uh, looking at my messages. I got a message from Doctor Strange. Uh, can you give Guri a shout out for me? He is in there, awesome as well. So Guri um, was nice enough to send a package all the way from. Uh, I believe this one came from Japan, and uh, Doctor's just received it, and he's uh, very very grateful. And uh, it looks very, very similar to the one that I received. It's got a whole heap of uh, chocolates and stickers and all of the cool stuff in there as well. So, again, Yuri, thank you. The doctor just wants to uh, con convey his uh, his appreciation and says thank you very much. And also, my, my, my kids say thank you very, very much for all the for the Japanese chocolate. It doesn't matter if it was in, the variety was in Japanese. They knew exactly what Kit Kat meant. <laughs> but yeah, Sorry, I just want to quickly... Uh, Shout that one out just when I, while I saw it. Time change should be totally <laughs> Sorry, double call says time change should be totally banished. We're in a 20, 24 7 world now, and the health effects make it not worth it anymore. Yeah, that's true. I know time travel just messes with everybody. Here we go. Hey, we've got Chris coming off the stage. Chris, how are you, sir? Oh, no, he's still, still in the elevator. So you there, Chris? Hello, Alex. Hello, Chris. Hello, How are you, mate? How are we doing? Hello, I'm good. How are you guys? I'm good, mate. So how's things? How how was your uh, your hockey game? Oh, I got leveled. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just come to the show instead. It would have been better. <laughs> uh, well, Thanks for asking. No, yeah, sorry. I was just doing a little running around there, but uh, just sat down right when I heard the shout outs for Gurry. I thought I'd jump in and send one too because he sent a little care package our way and uh, Gurry if you're still listening thank you so much um, little Star Wars shirt we got to say the Japanese Kit Kat my kids just absolutely love those and uh, surprisingly my son he's kept a couple in his uh, drawer I don't think he's ever going to eat them but he just loves the packaging so mm. future collector I think going on there <laughs> Yeah, that packaging is pretty cool. And like I said, like it, it doesn't matter if it's in Japanese. My kids know exactly what Kit Kat meant, so they're going, "Ooh, oh, chocolate!" You know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious chocolate bar. What do you do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. But yeah, but uh, we're just going over the uh, the the Marvel Mighties and the uh, and the Nemo drop. Uh, Chris, did you manage to, to to pick up anything? Did you go for it at all? 
Um, I didn't. I've been kind of busy this this weekend, but uh, I picked up a couple of things in the store. I just got the Elsa, and a uh, little. Well, I don't know if froze on here. I don't have to have a look, but uh, I grabbed the three nine eight. So someone Florida right at retail. I'm like, well, let's add it to the set. Why not? I I love that show. The uh, if anyone hasn't seen it, the the Werewolf by Night. There was the black and white. Disney Plus put out mm-hmm. like what's that last year right around Halloween about before? that yeah and uh, I think there's a episode two pending coming out there might even be a series that I think is is in development so I think we're gonna see a lot more of this mm. this type of uh, character so yeah I think and these NFTs the uh, these new minis they look great it's uh, stuff like the Moon Knight one I mean it's so well designed I just love it but it's there's not the FA, but so I, I understand why it's probably not doing as well in the market right now. But mm. um, I don't know who posted it. It was, uh, was it Sergio or someone, right? This, this whole issue with these chasers with this such limited scarcity on these secret rares. That I, I have this suspicion it's devaluing all the other assets and it's telling the market the only thing worthwhile is the secret rare. And mm. I, I don't know. I somehow find that I mean, a little sad, a little disappointing. Um, I mean, the value of these sets, the MCP points alone, if you have a whole set, is significant. But, I mean, if you're really not lucky enough on the draw to get one, like there's not a lot of people that are going to go out and have five, $600 to go grab a Nemo, right? And mm-hmm. then you really get into a, a challenge of, you know, I'm in it right now, right? Like I, I'm really close to finishing this this little hunt that i'm trying to accomplish here but you know that'd be a lot of gems to pull away from something that is personally more significant so mm-hmm. makes it a bit of a challenge right it's uh it's frustrating but i mean what do you do right i mean the whole thing is is scarcity is is valuable so that's the other side to look at it right i mean if you're lucky enough to get one of those wow and congrats right? so mm. but uh yeah, I do agree with Sven a little bit too. It's it's hard when you see some of these things that are, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into putting them out, and then you just don't see the value back in the market. You know, I think uh, Sanity from Swaggle House, Swaggle House. Yep. Right. That's. I mean, to see his first comic, he was so excited to go and pump and partner with Vivi, and now it's it's selling under two bucks for the common cover. I mean, that's still. He curated an artist. He put that cover together. He partnered mm. with Evie. He partnered with his publishers. He went to Kickstarter. He raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to put this product into market. This wasn't like a product that he just came up with overnight, right? And no, absolutely a, not. Yeah, and, and he's a big deal. Like, if you haven't watched his YouTube channel, like, he is a go to resource for physical comic collectors in all levels, right? He is a. He is a guy that gets it. He gets the industry. He was anti-digital for the longest time. You go back, watch his videos. He's like, I'm not sure about all this stuff. And here he is now, a few years later, right? It's a big deal. And, I mean, I know I write the Go Collect community, right? And I, when, uh, when I first started talking about digital, yeah, you know, the feedback was aggressive, right? And then I write an article that says, you can't say that anymore. Your favorite YouTuber, Swagglehoss, has just partnered with Vivi and launched a digital comic in addition to his physical. And I look at it as we thank him by selling his product for two bucks on a market. It's just disappointing to me to, to see that. Um, and again, right, if you got the secret rare, well, look, they're, they keep the value, right? The ultra rare is kind of holding a little bit, but it's sort of like anything under that. And I just... I don't understand this narrative because as a, as a comic collector, it's the OG cover that you always go for. Mm. Right? And so I sometimes see that we're disrespecting that and I, maybe it's just people still don't understand it, but uh, there's a race to undercut everybody in the market. It's happened since day one. Right? I don't know why it keeps happening, but, but anyways, I, uh, I take advantage of it. Right. So, I mean, I see these things, I buy one at seven and now they're at two and I buy three or four more and, I feel fortunate my DCA is at around the three three dollar level, right? So, 
make make hay when when the sun's out. But that's right. That's that's my little bit. But I also I'm I'm kind of excited. I I don't even remember. I have to say I, I entered a bunch of contests during Comic Con, and I guess there was one that. Uh, that VV was doing, and it, it just showed up at my door yesterday. But I, I have a signed copy of, of uh, the OG cover from Swigelhaus the Saint. Uh, oh, no Saint. way. Yeah. So awesome. It's, uh, it's a beautiful looking book. Uh, he signed it in like a gold pen ink. It looks great. He didn't sign it in an area that detracts from the cover. It's like those are little things that he gets too, right? He understands that stuff. And so. Now I'm thinking it's been I can't even remember how many years since I last got something graded. So I might I might send it in just to, to get it in the slab. But uh yeah, very cool. So yeah, thank you, awesome. VB, and yeah. thank you, Swagloss, if you're listening and uh yeah, very excited to receive that. So that's it, so that's awesome, sorry. Yeah, very cool. Always, always makes me so happy to hear stories like that. Uh, Sven, you, Sven, you had your hand up for a, a second, right? Yeah, there came up a, a little idea. So Chris is into comics, so Chris knows these these um, things. Could it be an idea that Swaggle House just launched common comics, but more of them? And then the ones um, that you could have four varieties, but if you wanted another variety, you had to buy like more common comics, like ten comics, like commons, to get yeah. an uncommon, ten uncommons to get a rare, ten rares to get an ultra rare, and so the uh, people that are really interested into the comic make their own value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like interesting. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's not all unlike what um, excuse me, what a lot of comic store retailers have to do, right? So that's right. You might buy a thousand comic covers to get, you know, twenty uh, variant covers, and then those variant covers become quite rare. But you know, from the, the the store itself, they have to buy the volume to get the limited number of the uh, the exclusives. Indeed, so, that that would be a bit the same principle. Yeah, I wonder too if that was. I always used to hear like back in the day when we were talking about we the owners being able to burn our comics right i know vivi's burning a lot that don't sell in the store but there was always mm -hmm. that you know would we be able to do that and then update um be interesting because a lot of them so sold out of course so i couldn't say oh, well i'll burn 10 of these books and i'll get a ultra rare for it if there's no ultra rares they'd have to hold some of them back to do that but what if they created a very exclusive cover right hire a curate an artist to come in and say look build this and anybody that burns x number of books you get this i do that that would be fantastic okay. i like that idea this is one thing though i always say with uh when i have my chats with you know we the the former physical collectors it's like you can't do that physically the fact that you even came up with that idea sven right that's a it's a great potential. That's the beauty of, of mm. how the digital allows us to come up with ideas and then say, well, let's try it. Right. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. No harm, no foul. Right. But uh, I think something like that would be pretty cool. Then, yeah, you cap it to say, well, in the physical world, this book only has 250 of those covers designed by this artist. So in the digital world, will match it or we'll say, you know, maybe it's 50% of what the physical world carries. And uh, yeah, you could do a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. That's pretty interesting. Mm. I like it. Yeah. I don't probably too with um, like when a lot of these guys drop these books at, at cons and whatnot, it's uh, I mean, they're taking advantage of the event, the marketing, the exposure, like every time, um, you know, like Gary, for instance, you know, our friend here from mm. British Columbia, I mean, he was out yep. taking videos and, and photos and posting them all over the place and tagging everybody. And then we reshare that and then it gets reshared again and so on. Like that's a lot of free branding that you don't have to necessarily pay for. So there's a huge incentive to maybe, you know, sell a little bit more, but I mean, I even go back to um, 
that video that, that Swag Haas put out when he's walking away from the booth and uh, he makes the comment, right? It's like, you know, okay, hold on a second here, right? In an hour, I just sold 1,500 books digitally. Yep. And what did they drop at? Seven, seven bucks each, right? Yep. So he said, there were more unique buyers of my digital book than I had people contribute money to my Kickstarter fund to launch the entire brand in itself. He says, what's going on here? Like, mm. how, how can I not? That's, I never thought I would sell that many physical books in the first hour, but I did through Vivi. That was a monstrous statement from a guy that's that deeply connected in the comic community. I, it's just a, it's a huge statement. That I'm surprised that video didn't really go bigger than it did, but uh, I still think as a lot of people, yeah, there's that. Well, what are these still? Yeah, how do you? What do you mean they're real? What do you mean they're not? They're not, you know, just digital fakes or facsimiles or Is copies. Or, JPEG. Yeah. yeah, this whole NFT thing. Uh, I don't know. NFA, but you know, Bitcoin over a hundred thousand dollars going to change a lot of people's perception that this isn't going away. That's right. So we're just on the cusp, I think, of sort of that mainstream level. But you know, when guys like that come to the table, and you know, he's got he's part of twenty four seven comics, right? It's not like he's just some guy. <laughs> he actually he knows the business, he knows the industry, he's connected to everybody. He's a fan favorite in Go Collect. He's got connections in CGC and all the grading companies. Like yep. He's been in this world forever, right? Yeah. And so I just look at that as an incredibly bullish statement. It's like, yeah, okay, well, sometimes people start from nothing and they grow into a brand called Marvel, right? And so give it a few years, right? But uh this is the first one. So I just, I look at that as, as being kind of neat. And, uh, you know, here we're seeing it. We're watching that live in real time. Yeah. We, those of us that are in here are witnessing this. So we're witnessing potential big parts of future history, right? Well, absolutely. And, so, and also considering as well, like, you know, now they've got the plans laid now for the, the, the uh, VV uh, uh, comic book creator uh, platform. That's, yeah. uh, that's going to open up a whole avenue of all sorts of cool stuff. I like, you know just like anyone can come in and 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 get their material on TV and use that kind of like as an onboarding method. Like you now you can have all sorts of independent artists. We can get like you know our own like you know, community artists going. We can finally get um uh, kid arcades art- <laughs> artwork in there as well. <laughs> right. And I mean that's just going to open like another like tsunami of possibilities. Tsunami. I know um, for anyone else that's seen it. Um, Denny Mazer, he put a post out where I think it was from a couple of years back, but there was a um, a group that came on to Shark Tank in the U.S. not the not the OG Canadian one for those that mm-hmm. know, um, but yeah, the the U.S. Shark Tank, and you know they were pitching like Mark Cuban and uh, you know Mr. Wonderful and Kevin O'Leary and all that on this idea of a um, African American comic book. Uh, dealing with issues and history and all that, but everything about it, um, very, very unique. And they were pitching these guys to help fund it so that they could turn it into an animated series and, you know, not just have the physical, but have the animated series to go along with it. And it's like, man, all I could think about watching that clip, how do you not know about Vivi? Right? You mm. could have come through this and not had to give away 30% of your business. Right. They were asking, they were giving away, I think, a 30% stake in their company to get funding. But you don't need to do that now. No, you don't. No. I, yeah. So I, I look at that going, boy, this would be a pretty cool thing once uh, once more people find out and there's an avenue there. And I mean, yes, Vivi's going to make revenue from it as they should, right? They're the mm-hmm. platform. But I think this opens up a lot, of, a lot of opportunity to some creators that we could see some pretty cool new stuff. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like that's what it seems like to me. Like, you know, uh, V's kind of like gearing up to be like the uh, like what uh, uh, Amazon does, like you know, with their book services and stuff. Like, you can still sort of basically right. cur- curate your material and then get it out that way. Yeah. But, uh, just is uh, that when? Is that when I was just gonna say, is that when Kevin Hart had an appearance on the show? Yep. Yeah, they're yeah, called. That's, um, that's the, that's called, the one. Yeah, they're called Black Sand Entertainment. That's the oh, one. okay. Yeah, Black thank Sand. you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah you, you watch know. Kevin Hart. You listen to him. He's like, man, I got all that set up. I got production. <laughs> I got animators. I got this. I got that. Right. I'm going to buy in. You only got to give me 30%. You don't got to worry about any of this stuff. And it's like, man, 30% of your business is a big deal. <laughs> That's a third. Right? So, I mean, I get it. You get connected with some popularity and that kind of thing too, right? But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm looking at this down the road. I think this is a pretty pretty smart play by them. Right? Mm. Oh, yeah, Eric is genius. But, uh, I just got a couple of, I got a couple of comments here, like you know, just in the comment box. I'm going to read out. So, Duck and Cover's got one saying, "Swagger House was the guy I turned to when I got into VV to learn about comics." Yeah, I was the same. Like you know, um, I I first got into Swagger House when um, uh, Chris, when you were talking about him, and, and at first, like you know, when Sandy dropped, I was just like, "Oh yeah, this is kind of cool." Like, you know, Mickey uh, Mickey Finnegan. I was like, "Oh yeah, I I, I don't have no idea who that is." He goes, "Oh Mickey Finnegan, aka Swagger House." Like, "Oh Swag oh Swagger House." Now I know who that is. <laughs> it's like, oh cool. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I, I watch his content as well. You know, he's very entertaining. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to get in, in contact. In, I'm actually trying to get in contact with him at the moment. So, if anyone knows how to hook a guy up, uh, let, yeah. let help, help, help me out. <laughs> Do it, because I, uh, I've got some thoughts in my mind going. You know, that might be a fun little. Uh, if I could get an interview to do him on yeah. Blood on Go Connect, right, and just say, hey. You tell your story, right? Don't, let's not just have me say everything. Like I've put the one out where I've got some quotes of his and stuff from from the show, but uh, that might be fun, right? Let's. There's our next one. So once we're once we're all uh, gone through Ben, then we'll move on to these guys. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Next you know, thing I, we'll I have. I want to say because it's a big point you bring it. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, no, good for your, your interview that you did with Ben was was great. And I, I thought it was great because you were a little bit away from the path that everyone else has been sort of on, like, you know, the the VV community introduction to Ben. And you had some of that, but you were also kind of going further out saying, tell the rest of the world about this. What does this mean? Why did you leave Binance and come in? I, I think, again, right, I, I keep saying this over and over. I think that's the, the going to be a very smart play as we try and bring in more new users to say, look, the, the New Zealand CEO of Binance came to Vivi. Like, like, pay attention. Pay attention, right? These are big moves. And uh, you don't leave Binance right? <laughs> to go to something that you think is lesser, right? So... That's where I, I, I really liked and appreciated what you were doing and the questions. And I know 30 minutes isn't uh, a hell of a lot of time to get somebody on a call, right? But uh, but you put it together really well. So kudos to you on that. Thank you so yeah. much, dude. That was yeah. pretty much what I was going for. Yeah, I, I yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that he... Uh, I think it was actually you, Chris, that was mentioning it in it was either last weekend show or the week before about how he, he would kind of just because of what the or like he, he would kind of hit some of the the, the points he's already talked about just because mm -hmm. I guess like, like that's how you kind of push a message, um, a message. Right. Yeah. So um, when I asked him the first question, and he started to answer. I looked down at the clock and I was like, holy crap, there's no way I'm going to be able to respond to anything that you said. They're like, I'm, I'm going to get through like two questions. So, yeah, um, yeah sure. I, I only got through like a fraction of the questions, but I, I really, really appreciate that because I don't know if you were here at the beginning of the show, but I said that as soon as I got uh, off the call with him, I was stressing because I was like, I don't know if I got enough info from the guy. I don't know how that went. <laughs> I'm going to have to listen to it back and yeah uh, make my call but um no I, I really appreciate that yeah no it was good it was well done so uh yeah and i just i love how you bring in the graphics and the background the animations and stuff like you really tie it together well so but that's to me that's important because that's the kind of content that someone that's not r routinely in vv or hasn't been in digital collecting those are the kind of questions and narratives that are going to help them at least get interested Right. I mean, the past three, four years, it's really been about building the platform, trying to make it stable, mm -hmm. listening to community feedback, try and fix things that are broken. Um, you've gone from a real small startup, you know, I mean, 
Dave and Dan in the beginning, right, were trying to do everything that we asked them to do. And you can only do so much, right? So mm. now you're at a point where it's a business. They're hiring some significant level positions, the job postings that they just put out, right? I don't know if anyone caught this, right? But it's pretty heavily marketing centric. Yes, I did notice that. I, that that's actually one of my talking points here. I've actually got the, got the uh, the the uh, jobs right here in front of me. Right on. So that's, uh, I mean, hint, hint. We're in early because, well, I mean, let's just say we have two hundred fifty thousand fans slash users, right? Out of a. What was the number he quoted there uh, on Ben for the number? It's like a four and a half, five, is there 50 or $45 billion industry? Oh, well, collecting, uh, yeah. 400 to 500 billion. Yeah, right. it's big. So, say $450 billion. And so Vivi's doing 4 million a month. So say 50 million a year, we're like 1% of that. Right? What happens when it's just 5%? Mm. That's a 4X. Right. Could we do that with a significant global marketing team? Right. I mean, that's one of the things. First thing I saw when I looked up Ben's profile. Right. He comes from a very large ad, large ad agency that was globally focused. Right. I mean, I know from our level, we're we're kind of national focused. We do most of our work, Canada, U.S., maybe a little bit of Europe and Australia. Mm -hmm. But uh when you talk about global marketing, it's difficult because there are so many levels involved and he's experienced in that. Mm. Right. And I think that's going to have some guidance into the people that join the team. And how are we going to set this up? You're starting to see senior level executives all over the world, right? Like there's a CEO in, um, where is he? Is it uh, Korea? Yep. That's right. Right. Uh, then you've got New Zealand, you've got Australia, you've got, uh, England, you've got, you know, you got talent in Canada. Like, I don't know if a lot of people know this. One of the first videography companies that VV used for those promotional videos, these guys are right here in Vancouver, right? I got to meet them. The first thing I, when I saw the videos and I saw the little tag who produced, I called them up and I said, I'm into VV. I got to meet you guys. Right? <laughs> and that's, right. that's how these connections work. Right. And it just, it just snowballs. And, it just it eventually we're going to see this where it's so mainstream, right? The challenge right now, I, I, I'm going to say again, right? It's people are skeptical of cryptocurrency. They're skeptical of NFTs. They think it's difficult. They think it's challenging. They think it's risky. You still got everybody saying you better put your Bitcoin on a ledger so the government can't come and seize it, right? These are still the things that we're saying over and over and over. When we don't need to say that anymore, hey, go to Amazon buy this uh this what's your favorite cooking device there <laughs> right buy this on amazon have it That's shipped it. to your house and it takes less than two minutes and you don't understand anything that goes on in the background the level of complexity to put the order through a system the credit card the shipping and delivery gone that's it all right? i care about is i pay for it and it arrives on my doorstep in a timely manner and then i can get to cooking <laughs> right I, I just want to cook right that's it. I, don't want to, I don't want to know the rest of it right i just want to read a comic book right that's it and i i think we're getting close and to me that was one of the first things that drew me into vivi right it's like just so easy mm. well and that's it's right getting easier it's getting and, easier and, and even like i remember on um uh, josh was interviewing ben like you know he said that's that's one of the things that uh that vivi was really trying to focus on is basically like like, like you put it like have the easy button Mm -hmm. easy button boy there's a reason i mean think just again from a marketing perspective that easy button commercial yep it, and that was like 20 years i don't even know how many years I mean, but it's it still resonates because it's so perfect just so perfect make it easy people buy make it difficult people shy i mean it's just yep we're we're almost there. Oh, I like that line. Hey, write that one down. Ladies and gentlemen, quarter of the night. I need that for a video later. That's right. That'll be the title. Right. Um, but yeah, and I, so I see all these little these little moves and positions, which to me are, you know, nudge nudge, wink wink. I mean, these are hints mm -hmm. that you're bringing on a level of capability now that's about to scale. 
right? We haven't really been too big on scaling, too over-focused on it. The ad campaigns we've seen, yes, there's been ad campaigns, but I don't think they've been designed to right, permeate the masses. It's like, make sure that we're set up right. Make sure that the things that we need to do to have this platform be acceptable in any market, right? And we're very critical here in North America, right? We want this thing perfect mm. and we wanted it perfect from day one, which was really difficult to do. But I think now, I mean, it's, it's getting better, right? There's not two websites anymore. There's only version two, I guess. That's right. right? Yep. Right. Yep. Some consolidation. I think Josh, you asked that point, right? Like why we have so many platforms, right? Well, let's get rid of what we don't need. Let's consolidate into what we do. Mm. Let's start tying these things together because that has a whole wealth of benefit from search optimization and organic support to ease of use. There's only one place I need to go. I mean, that's it's really starting to come together. Mm, definitely. Yeah, I, th I think Ben's starting to patch a lot of the holes. Like he, yeah. he like, like you said, he, he has the advertising background. So I think he came in, he picked up on that right away. He picked up on the fact that the BB verse should have already been delivered. Uh, he mm -hmm. picked up on the fact that they should have communicated that. Um, I think another thing too, is that, he's really good at stepping in and knowing when to give people their spotlight. So like, for example, the video that he did with Corey and my collectibles and there was someone else on Swaggle house. Um, there was a point where someone was talking, he actually cut them off and he said, wait, 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 I just want to give Corey his flowers because of, you know, all the, the work he did with TikTok and eBay and this and that. And I was like, you know, he cut them off. Sure. But he did it for the right reason, and he knows exactly when to step in and do that. And I think that's super important given the yeah. position he's in too. Um, but yeah, like he, he like I said, I, th I think he's patching, patching some of those holes, which is mm. uh, it's good to see. And he can communicate. Like the dude can talk well. Like he he's really good at yeah at making things easy to understand, right? Yeah, which is yeah. is super important. So, and he's got the accent. We love that here in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. The, All you British, New Zealand, Australian guys, we have a lot of you here. So, yeah, we, we love it. That's now, it. now, now, here, what I will say, because I don't want to seem like I'm just, like, boosting this guy. Um, I, I did ask him about, like, why they, they separate into so many different platforms. I love that he said that they're looking into that, like they're considering maybe downsizing or, or like, seeing where it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing though, and, and maybe Chris, you can give an opinion on this as well. His, his comment on, on us running, us, us running the banner ads pretty much because the data points to that being the best option. Mm. I was kind of scratching my head being like, uh, I don't necessarily think that because I mean, when I was in the car industry, I had a, I had a GM come in to flip the dealership and he had a, a bit of a presence in the radio space. And this yeah. guy's talking about running different radio ads. And I, I walk into the office and I say, Hey man, you know, regardless of however many leads you bring in with that radio ad, I can almost guarantee that if you toss the same amount of money into digital marketing, something more modern, you're going to pull in more. And yeah. so I had that thought when he said that I was like, well, have you guys have you guys tested other things like video ads? Because I haven't even I haven't seen them. I've mm -hmm. only seen the one banner ad. So I don't that that's something I'm gonna maybe elaborate on in Tuesday's episode. But what are your thoughts about that answer? Yeah, mm. uh, well, I mean, I work in in data. What do we want to call it now? Data first marketing. Like we use we use some really really expensive, but. Uh, crazy technical tools like we're in the world of data management platforms and data acquisition systems like it's it's all data so he's right when he says the data gives you inference as to what you should be doing um i think our systems go well beyond what vivi's been doing which is mainly just paid social ads and google ads like um it's an easy way to explain it so google's a big network and I don't know the number, it's something like 2 billion properties on the internet today, right? And Google operates within about a third of that. So all the sites and video platforms and, you know, blogs and all that kind of stuff, Google has within their network. So if you think of a, a sandbox, you know, a ch child sandbox, right? All this stuff is in one box, that's Google's. But then 
the data is restricted to Google's network. You only get insights as to what's Google, what Google's telling you about. If I say Yahoo, now there's some of us out there and you know certainly my age group, I was around when Yahoo started. Yahoo was the first company based out of Sunnyvale, California that started employing these data focused systems to understand who their readers were across their own sandbox. Now you got two networks and then AOL did the same thing when they started handing out CDs to get you online. <laughs> Seen it all, it's unbelievable. But uh, they got a network. Microsoft MSN, right? How many uh, laptops were distributed globally that came with MSN's operating system and their web browser, right? And so you've got, I mean, that's just four I've said. There's like 100 or 200, right? There's networks all over the place that don't crisscross and don't play well with Google. Google's what's called a walled garden, right? They want to contain you in their ecosystem so that you pay more money to them. They give you Google Analytics for free as a way of saying, well, you'll get more insights if you buy more Google, right? Meanwhile, it's the old adage, right? Whatever market you grew up in, there was always more than one phone book company. Well, if you were a business and you only put your ads in one phone book, you guaranteed you didn't get any calls from the people that read the other books, right? So that's where we get into this world of data and understanding where are these audiences coming from? Where are the efficiencies happening? Some networks are going to be more popular in some countries than others, right? Google does really well here in North America, but it might not be the best in Asia, for instance. So that's where these new systems of deployment of the messaging become very important because they're going to show you what are the interaction rates. Did somebody see an ad, not click it, but I can track the device that said that device is now just signed up for an account, but they never clicked our ad. Well, you can actually put those pieces together. Mm. Right? Very, very scientific. To your point, Josh, yes, video ads generally pull better because they're more visual, they have more impact, they're more engaging, uh, they deliver usually a better response, but a good old-fashioned, well-designed, static retargeting ad right the video ad brings you in you look around you don't sign up you don't buy anything those retargeting ads if they're placed kind of mathematically like just don't bombard me with ads just you know a lot of companies do that mm -hmm. if you do it right your conversion rates on retargeting ads can sometimes be in the 40 50 percent range right and so there's a way to scale your messaging beyond buying ads on Google that not a lot of companies even really know about yet. Kind of like not a lot of companies know about NFTs and blockchain and all that, but that's where it's switching, right? Once they start doing it and they see it and they understand it, all of a sudden this is where, you know, the AI systems take in, right? These mathematical models get really, really smart at saying, this is how you find conversion rate efficiency. And this is the ad units that are doing it. And these are the platforms and these are the markets and these are the audiences. And suddenly I'm not asking the client for, to spend a higher budget. I'm saying there's a more efficient way to spend the budget that we have. And then from that insight, that's where you can start to scale. That's where you can start to say, well, we haven't been advertising in this market, but look all this data that we have from the ones that we are. Mm -hmm. Now you can start to grow and grow and grow. And you need a team in place that, can help understand all of that and make insight and take the data and do something with it. Mm. So again, that's for me, this bullish signal that they're building the team that's going to be globally focused on that. Right. Um, yeah. And I, and, and, and I agree with every point you said there, I think my question is in order for you to gather the data, you got to run the campaign. And I just haven't seen any other campaigns run other than the banner ads that yeah, I, I, I'd referred to. Point. So that's, that, that was my question. Right. So like, like when my GM ran the ads on YouTube, I would be at the dealership for 10 hours a day and then go home and see his face pop up on my screen. I'd be like, oh, damn, right? Like yeah. I would still see the ads pop up. So yeah. I'm, I'm just curious, like if, if the data points to the banner ads converting the best, they have to have data elsewhere. And I just, I like that. That's where my question is. It's like, yeah, where no, are I, the other I don't campaigns? think I've seen that. I, I just don't think they've done enough 
to to really say, oh well, look, we've tried you know a hundred different types of ads and platforms, and right? That kind of stuff, right? And I that's think ex- it's been straightforward, right? Let's get stuff out into market so that we at least have exactly. some idea what people like. But yeah. yeah, to your point, I mean, when I go on social media and stuff and I see VV ads, it's like, okay, well, that's great, but I'm a heavy user already, so I'm not really the best person that should be receiving those ads and even though they might be pennies on the dollar right but um you know the way impressions are priced these days it's still an ad coming to me and i'm already the converted what you want to do is figure out what do i do in my online you know daily use and model that find patterns and traits to say Okay, we've already got this guy. Let's not send him an ad. But this person over here is doing ninety-five percent of the same things on a regular basis. They should get an ad as a new prospective buyer, right? And that's where you can really get exciting using some of these data systems. So, hundred percent. Yeah, sorry guys. I just want to. Um, I know I've been uh, waiting very, very patiently in the background. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we've got uh, Tails and Brizzo up. Uh, hey, Tails. Sorry to, sorry to, to, to keep, keep you waiting so long, mate. No, it's all good. Uh, I wanted you guys to, you know, if you haven't, if you still want to touch on this topic, I, I came up to talk Vivi there. So um, I don't know whether you guys are done on this topic. But no, feel no. free to carry on. Let, let, uh, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. We can talk Vivi verse. No, I'm done. I'm done. We can talk Vivi verse. I'm done. I'm tired. <laughs> Too much work talk on a Sunday. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. No, Tails, go for it, mate. The floor, the, the floor is yours. Well, no, first of all, hello, everyone. Hope, you, hope you're all good. Uh, great interviews this week. You know, with Ben, as you've all, all covered, um, Josh, like you say, did a great job. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was in the space last week or I came late and then I went and listened back. And I swear you didn't even talk about the VVverse then. So I, I guess I would just want to, obviously, you guys saw the Decon 2022 demo, That's right. you know, what I dropped last year for the, via the team and what, what you've seen recently. So I, I mm-hmm. guess I wanted to see what people's feelings are now that you've seen a bit more. Um, are you excited? Are you less excited? Like, what's what's the, what's the sentiment? Because I haven't really seen many talk, people talking about it, to be honest. So I just wanted to come up and see what the crack is. Yeah, yeah. Get, get some feedback. Uh, well, I, I've definitely got some feedback for you. Um, though the uh, the uh, first of all, the stuff you're doing with the Unreal Engine, uh, with the Batman uh, content and the Aliens uh, content, amazing, mate, Fan- fantastic. So I just want to give you a bigger uh, congratulations on that one. Uh, but yeah, um, as as the V verse itself, um, I reckon it looks uh, looks very cool. Um, like so it for me like you know the whole thing i, I was really hang, hanging out for was being able to display my comic books on the on, on the walls and uh, it looks like that's 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 sort of coming along it doesn't look like they can sort of like you can't open the comic books and display like interior uh, content or anything like that it's all just purely uh, cover art but um yeah i mean I'm, I'm i'm definitely looking forward to it and uh excited to see where it goes good stuff josh how about it uh well my well my opinion hasn't really changed much i'm still super excited but um i i feel like i I think it was you who actually left a comment uh who said it perfectly that you know when they had revealed the trailer with with your gothic city um creation that was kind of showing how you can build like your whole own world right and then i i guess they're their idea assuming i I assume their idea with this one is to kind of scale back a little bit to show you that hey you can just build like you know, the showroom that's already in the app, right? Um, and and either side, you have people complaining. And I think that's going to happen regardless. So um, them releasing the video where they kind of preempted some of the negativity and set some expectations, I think was a really smart move. Um, I, I think Ben understands this. That's why. Um, I'm assuming that was probably his call. But as soon as he came in and he said that, you know, VVR should have been delivered. We should have, you know, communicated better about it. And then they release a video like this. I'm like, dude, that's, that's exactly what you got to do. So, um, and, and when I say, I think that he realizes this, I think he, he understands that even when they drop it, they're still going to face backlash regardless of how good or bad it is just because of the delays or, or what people's expectations are. And it just doesn't meet those. So, I, I'm still super excited. I mean, you know me, I have, I have a pretty good 
understanding of how it all works. I build inside like Unity and Unreal Engine. So I, I, I think my biggest, biggest criticism is they should have had somebody who could have built out a bit of a nicer showroom. I know, Dan, I think Dan built it out himself, but mm. um, I'm, I'm not saying like build a bigger space or anything like that. I just, I think they could have done more with the space. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm just as excited as I was before, just as eager to get in there. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I've you know, I, I've been in there since the start, so I've been very privileged in that way and uh, know what the capabilities are and are not. And yeah, Josh, I appreciate that. Like, so uh, when I went into 2024, I don't know whether you ever really knew 2023 tales, but I, I, I like to have a good old rant on the timeline. And I went into this year saying, I'm not going to do that anymore. And I stopped myself from like, responding or replying or anything like that when it comes to Vverse a lot this year and then that one from asian dan just kind of triggered me and i've got like absolutely no problem with the dude I think he's a great guy I, I just kind of got pissed off that he uh yeah. kind of pigeonholed me as all of a sudden the fun i'm like mate like <laughs> like listen just you know just try and read what i'm actually trying to say to you but um yeah, and I get, I, look, I get it. People like to speculate, right? Uh, I remember how exciting it was pre-Marvel, right? And it's great that Marvel came. Everybody was like, yes, but people love speculation. But a lot of the people in this community get upset when they have this speculation that doesn't come to fruition. And it's just like, the team said this, this, and this, and now you're complaining you can't sit down in a Lambo. Like... Just come on. Anyways, that's my second part of the round done. But um, no, that's great that people are, are still excited. And yeah, I, you know, hopefully people are going to get to see more soon. I, I don't know on that. But, mm. it, you know, it did say episode one. So I'm just going on uh, my own spec mm -hmm. there. And I'm trying to, I, I said this to O'Milly because I know O'Milly, like Ben comes into O'Milly's spaces quite a bit. Um, but, and this is nothing against David and Dan. You know, they've they've clearly got Ben on to do more because their hands have been tied. Dan yeah. said it in the interview. Uh, you know, they had to pause making a VV verse because of VV comics, right? That's right. So in my opinion, I don't think we would have got this unless Ben came on board. I think it would have been a long way down the line. Uh, Agreed. But Agreed. what I want to get Millie to ask is if they show some more stuff when are these NDAs getting lifted? Because well, if it gets to the point where other people can show clips of their showroom and stuff, let other people show some stuff. Yeah, they've well, already said that the that the uh, that the IPs, you know, all IPs are on the table, right? Mm -hmm. And I know there's sometimes the IPs don't like the mixing of IPs. That's going to happen. It doesn't matter, right? It <laughs> once it's open, you're not going to stop putting. Batman fighting Spider-Man, right? You're just not. So that's that's what I'm hoping we can get some clarity on soon mm -hmm. because it's, uh, I, I keep on kind of joking, but it's like being in an amazing prison, right? You, you, you've got <laughs> like your PS5 and stuff in your prison. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, well, that's, 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 that's one thing. I'm I'm, I'm hopefully, I'm hoping they're going to do like, you know, because like you said, like they've got episode one, is more or less like the the starting block, and now they're going to start, like you said, hopefully uh, lift the, uh, the 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 MDA. So actually, the the content creators out there, or the the vault builders, sorry, who have actually spent all this time building these amazing vaults, actually now actually get a chance vault these spaces to actually um get a chance to show them off and just say, look, this is what I've been working on for the past X amount of time, and like, look, I can finally show you, and this does this, and this does that, and I'm 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 pretty confident, like you know, that that is basically what what is going to happen eventually. But uh, we've got uh, my my collectibles up to the stage as well. So uh, MC, how are you? Sir, and uh, yeah, did, hopefully you uh, had uh, had something you could uh, uh, chime into the conversation with, maybe. Hey guys, how are you doing? Good, good. We're just uh, discussing uh, the V verse and a bit of speculation, and hopefully what we can see moving forward. Thanks for hopping up, man. Yeah, of course. No um, tales, you know. <laughs> how you doing, man? How's it going, bud? You doing good? Doing good. Yeah, um, yeah. I came up just to say hi and everything, and. Uh, but I'll, yeah, I'll touch on the VV verse. Uh, not the last you'll see of all the stuff we're gonna do. And uh, yeah, in terms of people who have like been working hard building stuff, you know, we're gonna start showing that. That's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure when the NDAs are gonna open up. 
but it's all coming because as Ben said, you know, uh, the timeline is coming up here. Dan said it in the video with Corey that, you know, in the first quarter of the new year, they're looking at like starting to open things up. So guys, we're on the right path yep. where it's coming and, um, you know, everybody's like patience is going to get paid off. And, um, in terms of like, you know, being able to see what people have been doing, being able to get in there and all that. So I, I mean, I can't tell you the date. I mean, that's up to of ben course, and the, yeah. the, the, the big guys, the big dogs, you know, and Dan and them. But, um, I think, um, I've been waiting for this. I mean, you guys know that, I mean, if, you know, <laughs> me being in the position I'm in since I joined, you know, the VV verse is pretty much the number one question people have always been asking me all through since I've been on the team. Mm -hmm. And I uh, haven't really been able to obviously answer my, you know, it was only like I knew that they were working on opening things up. I just didn't know exactly when. And, um, you know, because they were obviously working with Ben and they were look, looking internally on it. And uh, there's a couple things out there that are really interesting that came through with, uh, you know, people's comments about kind of their perception of things and the VV verse being like maybe put aside. And um, there's a lot that people don't know about. Uh, issues and things like that, technical issues and stuff like that with the development of how it was going and and all sorts of stuff around it that, you know, prevented it from being opened up to everybody. So that stuff hopefully will get told and eventually brought out and explained so people can know that they weren't just sitting on their ass, not doing anything. Mm. Um, the beta testers themselves obviously feel the, the most sympathy for them because they've been in there, you know, rocking it up and providing feedback and Tails, you know all about that, right? I mean, you guys have been in there doing all sorts of stuff and uh, not being able to show it. So that's obviously frustrating. I mean, over a long period of time, but you can see that Ben's fully in there with working with Dan and, you know, we've just shown it, right. They just released that whole video and with Corey and there's more to come on that. And um, so, yeah, it's just, they're just going to start opening it up and uh, they want to make sure, I think that it's probably uh, really ready to go. There's there, like I said, there's, there's, there, <laughs> There's a lot that goes into the site in regards mm -hmm. to third party stuff and all sorts of other things that like are, you know, sometimes out of Evie's control that they haven't talked about, told about. I mean, they're not going to throw people under the bus. They're not going to do things like that. They're going to be professional. Yep. And it's caused major delays, obviously, and things. But stuff that's like over my head that I don't know exactly. Right. And, um, you know, so for me, you know, being in the community manager and uh, me and Eagle specifically over the course of the last whole summer and everything before Ben really joined, you know, we could only say what we could say, you know, yeah. and so didn't really say much, you know, we just kind of told everybody, you know, there, we knew that there was announcements coming. We knew they were planning on hopefully like the fall. We we're trying to like, just say everybody, well, as soon as they know, as soon as there's a, a news, the old guys will be the first to hear it, but they are still, it's not dead. It's not gone. It's coming, you know, and, um, it's been a long time. So there's also people questioning like about the inside outside, you know, all that stuff because we've seen the outside of it before, you know, in the, uh, in our, in our other previews, right. We're walking around the outside and uh, all that stuff's in play. You guys will see it all. And, um, the best thing that I'm most excited about that I can't wait for is for the, the big beta testers who have created crazy stuff to mm. finally be able to, show what they've done and it's just it just blew, blow your guys's mind i mean uh and that and that that stuff will start to there's 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 a plan in place for that i'm i'm a big part of that i'm not going to tell you when but very soon you'll start to see um a couple things like that and then that that's a prelude to opening things up i think so um but just wait for the big dogs to announce this stuff to make the, the, those choices um and then i'll obviously be in the middle of communicating that and probably be in some of those videos uh but Corey's really uh in there like that video he did with dan was they sat down and okay. did that and that video was like not like edited you know i know it wasn't like a live video but they just shot that like pretty much straight out i don't think there was any editing really at all they just sat down together walked through you know i think it was dan's uh you know showroom or whatever and just showed us showed a little bit of stuff so it's gonna be really fun to see uh, how things go as we go on but super exciting but i also wanted to congratulate and thank you know um uh, collectors gone digital for your great interview uh that was really well done i really i really liked it i really thought you did an amazing job um and i hope everybody uh appreciated that that was a good one uh dove into some cool stuff and um you know um Thanks for doing that. And then I know Chris, uh, we've been chatting. You guys will see something coming up with Chris. 
which is going to be super cool too, which he'll do a different angle on things. And so Chris, we can't wait to work with you on some stuff coming up. And I know I'll, I'll let you, uh, you know, talk about that when the time's right. But, uh, and I see that Ben's actually up here now that, too. So there that, you go. So it's a that, fun day guys. That, a- that's actually what I was about to say. Josh, you must've done <laughs> such an amazing job. He's come back. He's come back for round two. <laughs> hey, you know, first been- off, first off, MC, thank you. And second off, Ben, thank you for, uh, for taking the time. So I just want to say that, but yeah. No, of course. Always, always come back for Josh. And it, it was, it was a great interview. So, um, so yeah. Hey everyone. How are you, Ben? Oh, Ben. I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, mate. Now, my first, my first question is, did, did someone end up sending you a Snuffleupagus? <laughs> no, they did not. Oh. They did not. About, about, about half an hour ago, I got off the phone from David giving him a very hard time about it. That's <laughs> so it. It's like, do not come back without my Snuffleupagus. <laughs> <Correct>. <laughs> Love it. Uh, but how, how's your, how, how's your weekend been, mate? It's like, so you've been, uh, been uh, picking up anything lately, collecting wise, or it's just all been meetings and trying to move things forward? A bit of a bit of both. A bit of both. I actually just um, unearthed a collective I r- forgot that I had, which was and this will mean nothing to anyone who's not in the UK. So apologies, but um, I've got a signed LP from uh, Corrupt FM. Um, which oh is great wow! To, which is now now tells 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 I know what that is, bro. <laughs> Ben, not first of all, nice to meet you, uh, Tails here. I've been pushing people just do nothing to this Phoebe community for four oh. years. Oh. Nobody <laughs> cares, bro, but I care. I've got, I've got to tell you, I'm, I've got such FOMO because they, they just did they just did a 10-year anniversary gig with General Levy, um, and oh, wow. I was on the wrong side of the planet for it. Gutted. H- have you seen them live before? Never. Never, I- ever, ever. I saw them just real quick. Sorry to divert everybody. This is literally no, no, go, only, only me and Ben don't know about this. This but is what these spaces them, are all about. Go for it. <laughs> I saw them at Brixton Academy, and they oh. were incredible. They had oh, key money. I saw that online. It looks amazing. A Chabuddy G did Dirty Diana, but it was Dirty <laughs> Dirty Donna, and it was. Of so course good. he did. Of course he did. I have, I have got tickets to Dizzy Rascal in Auckland next year, so that's as close as I can get. Nice. Nice, nice. Yeah, awesome. Um, we'll see. Uh, Where are you going? I was going to say, speaking of trips, uh, Ben, do you know if any VVT members are coming to Vegas at all? For um, members of the fam are, but not uh, not the company. Um, and it's not a right. it's not a snub. It's just a um, yeah. We we prioritized uh, New York and, and yeah. San Diego and D twenty three this year, so not this yeah. time. Okay, no problem. No, that was. I, I am aware of Magic Mansion, which sounds quite exciting. <laughs> uh, but we've also got a Guri up to the stage as well. Guri, how are you, sir? Hello, 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 everyone. I am doing well. I just have a bunch of jet lag. I'm sleeping at odd hours, and I apparently lost an hour or gained an hour. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, mate, you must be all over the shop. You're basically like the very definition of time travel at the moment. Yes, yes. Uh, so I just wanted to jump in and say hello to everyone. Uh, big hello to Ben. Uh, welcome. And I, I bet you have a bunch of things you want to get done and deliver on. So that's good. Hello to MC. MC, we miss uh, your uh, man. We miss your videos and your candid input on should we go for the drop or not. We have no one telling us that, uh, and so you know, it de- uh, dearly missed in, in many cases. That's easy. Go for the drop. <laughs> <laughs> so do it. No. no, no. We want. We want. Uh, we want. We want MC. We want someone like that. But anyways, you know, that's what has happened. Has happened, and we wish him well in this new role, and he's doing a good job. Hey, I have a quick comment, and I know that I have. Uh, maybe I'll spend 30 seconds on this. I would love to see a simple use case, a simple input field on my profile that says, add a second person, name of the person, email of the person. And in the case that I disappear or I'm abducted and I'm taken to another planet that oh, okay. has access to my account. Now I know there's an offline process and you have set it up pretty well, but it's still offline. We're in 2024, going to 2025. We don't need a lot of offline stuff. If someone can just 
designate a second owner of the account or a beneficiary, that would be awesome. So that's my request. And I'm, that's been my request for uh, at least a couple of years now. Oh, okay. Can I give you a really annoying answer, which sure. is not going to be the one you want? Um, so you're, it seems straightforward, and lots of things seem straightforward, but basically we've, we, we just have to prioritize, right? So what we are going to do, I'm just working through it with the, um, the product team at the moment, is we're going to come up with a way for the community to suggest features and enhancements. Um, and it, I'm not sure whether it will be on the on the platform or or on social, but we'll work it out um, so that we can gather all of that and we can start to um, kind of quantify what the demand is for the different things. Because that, that this this is a really good example, right? There's some stuff on there that for you would be awesome. Depends how many other people would use it, and is it better than other stuff that we're looking at to prioritize? Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we, we're just going to formalize that process a little bit of giving people the opportunity to submit suggestions. So. It's not a, unfortunately, I can't say, yeah, no worries, we're onto it because um, we, we haven't got people sitting around. But we are coming up with a way for people to express things like that that we can then consider. Hope that helps. It's not exactly the answer you want, but we'll yeah, get it, it makes sense. I mean, you're running a big organization. You have so many things to deliver on, mm. so many things the tech team wants to do, the dev team, product team, market, vendors, by you know, partners. Uh, clearly, you cannot deliver on everything. Uh, just, uh, but this is a great start. So, thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. I have a, uh, I have Sven messaging me questions to ask Sven <laughs> on stage. It's like Sven, Sven, Sven don't, <laughs> don't be scared, man. Come up, come up. It's okay. Come on, Sven. I'll, I'll come. I'm up, I'll, I'll come quietly on it on on the stage <laughs> and. And Ben, uh, which 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 skin did you uh, get for um, Fortnite? Which which skin? Uh, yeah. I knew it'd be a Fortnite question. I got the uh, I got I got the Nike one, the uh, the 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 shoebox and the gear one. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, the Nike swoosh. I I got them too. I got them too. Yeah, yeah. good good awesome. good uh, good pick. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if you don't know who Sven is, now you do. <laughs> absolute gem in our community and maybe i wanted to say something too um regarding tales um for me the the demo about uh, the vv verse um i would wanted to have them going around a bit more i noticed that dan isn't really the gamer and Corey was walking around all the time in the in the showing room in the showroom and uh, dan was just standing still and it was always telling my TV, come on, move, move. <laughs> because in, in the games, you explore everything, you go everywhere. And, and Dan was just static. And Corey was going from the other room to the, from one room to the other room. So that was something uh, I noticed there. So you, did, you, you didn't end up smacking your TV thinking it was like frozen, did you? And I was, I was <laughs> complaining to my television with my brother next to me. <laughs> <laughs> We got yeah. a look, good look at the self-made collectible, though. So you know, there's always indeed, that. Indeed, indeed. That looks fantastic. Looks fantastic. Yeah, it did look really good. Oh, it's actually, that's good, good feedback. And there, there, there's yeah, um, my collectibles were saying there's there's definitely going to be going to be more. So we'll, yeah, we'll take that on board. That's that's good feedback. Mm. Yeah, can I uh, actually ask about the one of ones? Because I saw some comments about those. Um, if somebody owns the one of one, but you guys are showing it in your showroom. You see where I'm going with this, or <laughs> so the one, the one of one, um, the one of ones that were in the display, they're Dan's. So, so he own he owns those. So, oh, he so does if you have them. a okay. one of one, you can display it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, right. Power, absolute power. <laughs> like he went for those naturally too, guys. Like this guy, like a one of ones. Oh, I, I, I have to get one somehow. Like my my level on VV, right? And um, I'm almost at 40 in like the next day or so I'll be, I'll hit 40, which, you know, pe there's people who are like way ahead, but because I've like have all these like, you know, bigger comics previously, you know, my MCP wasn't really like kicking in, but I've, I've really souped it up lately because it's just for me, right? Like I really wanted to move up, but having a one of one, <laughs> I mean, mm. I look at them, I see them out there. They're coming in there every now and again on the, like, on the market, you see them and it's just, um, I mean, yeah, you know, like, and I see this Ghost Rider that's out now, and I just look at him like I had, I had to get the the set right. I had to get the set, 
uh, you know, just for me, for as a collector, I had to get the Mephisto. And I tried a couple times to get him on the drop, and I just went into the market and grabbed him because I wanted him. But I see that Ghost Rider, and I just love mm -hmm. Ghost Rider, right? And I, I see him, and I'm like, oh, I want that guy. So uh, there's certain things that uh, I know when I was talking to Dan about just his collecting. Uh, it was really interesting, too, because um, in New York, when we were at the Comic-Con, you know, um, you know, the staff and team get to hang out and more than like just in a meeting because, you know, we're a lot of us are kind of like in different places. So when we're working together throughout the week, we have our meetings, we have our and we have a chance to talk with each other, too. And, you know, on a personal level from time to time. But we're all, you know, quite busy doing what we're doing. And so when I was in New York, I had a chance. So I was sitting beside Dan while we had like, um, you know, a staff dinner at the very end just to kind of like unwind right on that sunday and uh, i was asking him about uh you know what he collects and stuff and not just in vivi right and that was a cool conversation i won't share with you guys here because you know it's his own personal collections of no, yeah, for sure. but it was super cool to like uh, kind of like have that convo with dan about you know what he loves to collect you know i know you guys know that ben's been you know he loves his uh sesame streets and, and you obviously you can see the funkos but oh, talking yeah. to dan you know he was like oh i'm like well what do you collect outside of you know because i never really had a chance to talk to him like in that regard you know um and that was fun and then i was sharing some of the stuff that i do then i was then david was sitting across the table and he was telling some stories about stuff he was hunting that weekend and i was like okay okay i'm in the minor leagues <laughs> the big leagues over here is <laughs> so yeah. you in the big leagues but it, i love that stuff right i love sometimes unattainable grails you know that i look up at and it, it is a collector you know in the physical space and also in, in vv and digital space and all that i love things that i look at and i go whoa like you know like when you see like a mickey mantle graded like you know rookie card mm. i mean no chance i'm probably ever going to get my hands on something like that potentially right but i love that it exists and it's there and it kind of inspires you know other ways to go and collect and things you might want to go after the personal grails right mm. so hearing some of dan's personal grails you know i know some of those one of ones were up there so um it's just cool like the the whole collecting um the whole collecting genre you know and we're just in this new space which is exciting so um but yeah i love sharing that stuff no, very cool. Um, sorry, I've got a uh, Guri and, and, and Tails with their hands up. Uh, I, I'm not sure who was up first, but <laughs> but um, uh, let's start with Tails. Tails, did you did you want to say something, mate? Uh, Guri can go ahead, and then we'll come back to me. Okay, no worries. <laughs> go for Guri. Tails is up. Okay. Uh, just just real quick, um, because I see nobody's talked spoke about this, and I think it was quite important that was said in uh. I can't remember which one, whether it was the pre the pre VV verse look or, or the one that we saw the other day, mm -hmm. but mobile was mentioned. Now, Josh, I know me and you um you you brought up in emoji space a few months back the whole thing of you know, not everybody's gonna have a gaming computer, obviously, if you if you try and build a really big space. So I think that's really important that they're um that they're working on that. And yeah, I'm just surprised that nobody's spoken about it or or I'm seen it on the timeline. But just thought I'd say that's that's bullish. That's good stuff. Mm. Because God damn it, I've been trying to get this Vault app fixed since 2021, bro. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> th thankfully, it's about to happen. So, well, it, uh, yeah. While while we're on that topic, I guess I'll ask this is has has the team considered releasing maybe just like a you know a one pager of system requirements like you know entry level intermediate mm -hmm. advanced kind of something you do you know yes. if, you, if you go into steam or something like that and you download a game it, it shows you the specs right so have you yeah. guys considered that yeah we have yeah totally so um we'll we, we will have that on launch amazing oh, very cool Oh, exciting, ladies and gentlemen! Exciting. You know what? Uh, what'd you guys think of the uh, tweets video? <laughs> that 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 was actually on my list of talking points as well. Like, though, Ben, I'm, I've oh, I've had a God. hilarious you uh, re reading out your own tweets. <laughs> that was great. I had sorry. I know Ben, you're up here and everything, but I mean, uh, that that I'm still. I have like a. I went out and bought some oranges. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just say, I I got a lot of credit for that, but did not deserve it. That was all um, Aaron and Corey's idea. So that was yeah, that was totally their idea, and it was it was a great idea. And we'll yeah. definitely do more of that. 
No, de- definitely do more stuff like that. I mean, like, it's really cool. I like, seeing like you know, little uh, snippets and stuff like that. Like, it really sort of like you know, connects with like you know, the audience and uh, and and the community. So, and just like it, it's, it's just fun. <laughs> uh, Guri, so go for it. Hi. Uh, sh- quick question to whoever can answer: Was the topic of mint numbers discussed, and is there any special way to show the mint numbers or have special frames and lights for? say the first mint number 41 21 11 or whatever the mm. number is so it was um it, it came up a lot in in the feedback so what we said um and 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 this is absolutely true is we're going to launch on day one with version one and from there and th- this is why i said before we're going to set up a way for for users to give feedback straight away on what they want to see what they like what they don't like um you know, that that that's a really good example of that came up from a lot of people because we you know we we won't always get get it right and be able to predict exactly what people want and don't want. And so the best way we think is to put put live the starter version and then start to start to in, enhance it from there. So yeah, it was discussed by um community when we revealed it. It's not part of day one. Um but yeah, definitely, definitely a consideration and getting a lot of a lot of uh, requests for it. That's where I always interject. Did I hear mint numbers? <laughs> yeah Chris gonna jump <laughs> up here. <laughs> I always love your uh, Fun Free Friday posts where you show some crazy mint number that like somehow, oh, this was on the floor, you know, and it's like <laughs> like some like, like super powerful mm. mint number. Like, I don't know how you find those. Like, do you just sit and like look all day? It's awesome. I mean, I, I'm in, I, just so you guys know, I used to play mobile games. Okay. I used to play Star Wars um, Galaxy of Heroes on my phone. And I used to play Marvel Strike Force. And I know people play Snap and there's other games too. I see the Pokemon stuff going on right now. Oh, yeah. But like, because of Vivi, right? Like, and I played these games just so you know, I used to play Galaxy of Heroes since 2015 when it launched. And I was like, so into, like, I was in a Discord with that, with a whole group of people. And like, you know, really high up in the game, you know, spent like way too much money on that game. But I had so much fun with it. And then, uh, yeah, they changed a couple things, which made me kind of back off a little bit, you know, just personal gaming style. But like once I discovered Vivi and I was in the app, I found that like I spend most of my time just looking in the app and going through the market. And uh, I think you're like that, Chris. I think you're 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 looking for mint numbers like it's a game, like it's like your mobile game. I don't know if that's true. I, I like yeah, game is a better way to say it. I I, I feel like I'm addicted now. <laughs> I see people's license plates. I'm like, man, that's a palindrome. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I did that too. I got a, I got an area rug like carpet for my living room like a year or two ago, and I, I don't know, nobody here would remember, but I posted the, I like, I the underside of the, um, the, you know, like on the underside there was like a label, and on the label it was numbered, and it was a really good mint number. It was like a low <laughs> mint number. <laughs> And I was, it's a carpet. This has nothing to do with like digital collecting, but I'm like, yeah, it's the same exact thing. <laughs> it's so cool. I, you know, it's funny you ask because sometimes, like right now, right, we're on the show and I'm just scrolling through the books and stuff. And I mean, I have like um, vault value, I think. You know, and there's certain certain mints if they show up in the in the market. Yeah, I want to know about them, right? But uh, just generally, like the other day, I was just scrolling through and. And, uh, you know, thank you again. I, that to, uh, The Marvel Comics 1 contest I entered, and I, and I, I won the, uh, the Marvels, that ultra rare. And so I'm like, I don't know this is speculation, right? Maybe you guys talk about this. You know, maybe one day a, a book that's never been opened before, it's just so pristine. And so I didn't want to open it and read it. So I went to the market just to buy a common, because I also like the, I think it's Alex Ross did those original covers. Mm, that's right. Yeah, and uh, I mean they're sitting at the floor for like a buck twenty. Was the match almost exact match to the uh, the Marvel Comics number one that I had? And so then I got to go back and I check, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's close enough. That's a fun little fit yeah, for a buck, right? And so I put it together, and then uh, you know it's just fun. I just like building those slides and putting them out and just showing the fun of you see something that could work. And then you put it together, right? And uh, but yeah, it's 
it's it's been my favorite part of the app since I first got into it and and started saying, well, yeah, why did you guys put those damn mint numbers on the front? It must be meaningful for some way, right? Mm. And here, I mean, I I do a lot of DMing with a lot of the different collectors out there, and they're like, oh man, you got me into these damn mint numbers. Now I can't not see them everywhere I look and. But it's so much more fun, and I'm having such a great time. And, you know, I watch, um, you know, like even you, Alex, I've seen you with some great little palindromes. Yeah. I think Fro oh, and I, yeah, we battle on a couple. Who's going to get it first? And some mm. of those ones like uh, uh, Viva Le, uh, Vivi there, you know, with the yeah, yeah. the one, two, three, four, five. Six. I mean, those are just, they're not easy to put those together either. Right? When you see them come out, it's like there's this beautiful little, synopsis of some work that you've done but and a lot of this isn't easy you know it's some of them are very expensive uh some of these sets that people put together i mean there was a lot of time spent they got it's not that might be my one uh takeaway for for hello ben and and, and aaron but you know the um it's kind of hard to to connect with everybody within the app so if you don't see a post in the feed, right, they kind of go away really quickly and you can't tag another user easily and say, hey, reach out to me. And if you don't have their Twitter connection, you can't DM, right? So I think that's a bit of a challenge for some of these people that are trying to put these really well-crafted uh, collections together. But when you do see them, it's like, wow, it's kind of awe-inspiring, right? Mm. So when I talk to a lot of the Go Collect readers, right, I get feedback on those articles routinely, right? And it's usually the same kind of stuff. It's like, I don't get it. I don't see the fun in collecting this stuff. I just don't understand it. And it's like, look, imagine if you collected dollar bills and there's people out there that collect palindromes on dollar bills or special years on coins and that type of thing it's no yeah. different it's no different it's just i'm collecting it through my computer i'm not actually going into a you know a store or something like that and holding it but uh, that hunt i mean it, it's enticing it's fun it's like mm -hmm. like the old days going to someone's garage sale and they got a box of comic books and you flip it through it and you're like <gasps> Yeah. this way for a dollar oh my god right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'll just give him a dollar right here's a here's an extra dollar tip right i'll give you a hundred percent more than you wanted <laughs> but uh, it's like that and so to me it's just another part of the fun of the the whole experience. well it's true man like they the mint numbers they count like they mean something they mm. and um you know they it's it's another it's just another uh level of mm -hmm. collecting mm -hmm. in this digital space right like it's just another right. another way you can differentiate yourself or your collection or do something special i mean there's people who collect like you know what was it who collects the 1985s there's someone who collects Brett, just 1985s ben, mm -hmm. ben yeah CF, yeah and then like yeah. uh clever jerk you know he like yep. um i mean god the stuff that he oh, like, that guy's goes off that guy's <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> I know. So it's just amazing. It's really fun to watch. And uh, I never really got fully into like mint hunting like that. But if I see something, I definitely grab it. Mine is mostly just the three digit uh, comic books, the common covers. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, and so I've, that's where I kind of just try to get any kind of comic, uh, like any comic that comes out that I want, I usually go for a common like three digit in the market if I can't land it on the drop. And so yeah. then I've started to build up a collection and those those numbers don't have to they don't they don't have to be exactly the same number but there's times when i've realized i've had like five of the six six mints like six mint numbers on, on different items that are not related at all and i go oh like i have a little mini collection going on here maybe i should start hunting for number like 341 or something you know because like right. I, I happen to notice that i have like six 341s and i'm like oh it's like a it could be my own, it could be, it could be an MC like thing, you know? And then I'm like, well, then, then I start looking and I'm like, well, I can't find any. And then I do find one and it's like really pricey. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just stick with my three digits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, like, Cause you, I know you've definitely done it to me as well. I remember the the very first comic that I bought on, uh, on VV was a um, new mutant summer 98, which is the first Prince of Deadpool. What, right. what, what I didn't realize at the time is that when I, when I bought it and I didn't think anything of this when I first picked it up, it was actually a, um, it's a it's a palindrome mint 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so I was just like, oh, okay, like it's just been there the whole time, and like, and 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 even though recently, like, you know, you'll, you'll be quite proud of me as well. I I, I picked up another another mint that you might have seen. Um, I got the the set the Sanity comic, uh, the Ultra Rare, with a mm-hmm. uh, mint number uh two four seven. Two four seven. Oh my god, yep. that's oh. fantastic. I know. I, I I and and it was on floor too. I was just like, <gasps> it's like, I just like, did you I, not I, grab that. That's I. Like- I Literally scrapped, <laughs> scrambled my computer as fast as I could. I, I, I had no near as I had no money to allocate to VV whatsoever. I didn't care. <laughs> Just like I have to grab. This <laughs> and yeah, oh, like, like, so, awesome. so I was like, I, it, at the same time, <laughs> I know, at, at the same time as well, I'm thinking, God damn it, Chris, why have you, <laughs> I been spending too much time around you again? <laughs> well, hey, look at it this way: you beat me to it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I would have grabbed that. That's See, a good that, one. The two four seven. On I know. I yeah. saw. I just went twenty four seven comics. Like oh, I have to get this before someone else does. Like, <laughs> and yeah, yeah that's, that's a good one, right? And see, there's that's the thing, right? Like. Nine out of ten people would never have seen that. And and a lot of I mean, we have a lot of new people to comics in the mm-hmm. app too, right? So you wouldn't connect that, man, that's the brand of the owner yeah. to put that out. So it's just a random three digit min. And that's where Aaron, you might get lucky saying, Oh, three digit min, I'll grab that one. And all of a sudden you're like, Uh oh, I didn't even realize. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why I always advocate, like I do get people asking me a lot of times, um, Maybe there's a business in here somewhere, right? That mint helper. <laughs> <laughs> mint, like, hey, mint, man, if I sell this, what, what should I do? And, yeah, and it's like, well, just you know, Google it, mm. right? So, Type uh, in your book and say, you know, uh, X-Men, whatever, comic book release date, and it'll tell you, mm. right? Is there anything special about that number? And before you go and floor it, Right, well, it might be worth another ten or fifteen percent. Right, who yeah. knows? Right, but um, that's why I say. But as you go through it as well, always remember it's like any market. Um, it's a funnel, right? At the top is where everybody just you know they're here to play, and the further down the funnel you go, the more narrow it becomes. So the fewer and fewer people are going to actually want to pay dollars for something that special, but those that do are willing to pay more. Mm. Right. Well, so I, I'll, I'll say, uh, and I'm just fan. I, I think, didn't you have your hand up? I didn't want to jump in there over, but I had something to follow up with Chris right after you. If you're. Yeah. yeah maybe, maybe it would be an idea to have like a little committee or a people like 10 people that are like, uh, the mint mint, um, judges judges, and you could show them your mint. And if your mint gets approved, your mint or your, uh, Collectible will get a little star or golden star. So, uh, Online CGC grading. Authenticated yeah. by the Mint Committee of BV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like it. You know, it's a good point because I think it almost has to be done by committee. I was just having a conversation with another friend this morning and, and uh, Denis and I have been talking about, we talk about this all the time, right? And uh, it's like, boy, like, Physical CGC grading, you kind of understand it, right? There's a checklist of all the things they have to look for. And does your book qualify on each checklist? Okay. And is it great? Is it signed? I mean, and all these little things that might add to the value. But look at this conversation about mint numbers, right? How would I how would I grade two four seven if it wasn't a historically significant mint or it wasn't a binary, a palette? Like where does that fit into the mix? So I think Spent awesome. That would almost have to be a community thing where people are like putting their input in. But boy, I could see the backlog. Yeah, (laughs) there'd be thousands of requests, right? It'd be long, long time. That'd be great. Uh, Sorry, uh, Guri. Sorry, Aaron. Yeah, I know you had a you had a comment. Yeah, well, uh, Guri had his uh, hand up as well for a while there. Yeah, Guri, you want to chime in there, mate? Yeah, I think I want to blame Chris Severs for (laughs) every. So here's the story. Every time I withdraw cash in any country, let's say Japan, there's only 10,000 yen you can withdraw and it comes in 1,000 yen bills. So there's 10 bills. Okay. And I'm looking at all the bill numbers. I'm like, is there going to be an 888? Is there going to be a 415? (laughs) (laughs) And people are like, hurry up. We want to use the ATM machine. I'm like, hold up. 
<laughs> Gary, I barely even scratched the surface on the cultural side, right? Like some some cultures love sevens, some love eights, fours aren't great in others, you know, ones or zeros or you know, it's all over the map, right? But again, it's fun. That's why I always say there's there is something for everyone in here. Exactly. Right. It's just you know so it's great. It's funny, Chris, is that like so it's like that notion when you saw like, you know, you start seeing things everywhere. Like mm-hmm. you start seeing the numbers. Well, like I was saying this about when I was at Com- the Comic Con, and I, I'm not uh, a pin collector, right? Like I'm not. I've never really been a pin collector. Not. I just never even really thought about it. You know, I was collecting in my own areas of comics or sports cards, or I was doing Sports Illustrated covers for the longest time, and like toys, of course, vintage toys. But I never really got into pins, you know, and I never really noticed pins. I never really saw them. And so we're at Comic-Con and, you know, we're at the booth. And, of course, the fake pin stuff is really flying and happening. And I'm looking at them, like, in my hand. And I'm like, whoa, that, this is a pretty damn cool, right? Like, mm-hmm. to see the KFC pin and then, and then uh, you know, the head of, like, uh, the, the digital side of KFC. He comes to the booth and I'm talking to him. And um, we did cut a little video with him and interview, but the audio, because it was there so packed in there, was not. So we're going to try to get something going with that because you, you guys want to hear from this guy. But anyway, that's later on. Cool. But so that's a, that's a side <laughs> note. And uh, Ben, you'll, 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 we'll be talking about that, right? So, um, but, um, but no, I start seeing pins. Like, it's like, you know, you start seeing mint numbers, right? Like, I start seeing pins. I start seeing everybody wearing pins on their lanyards, their hats, their jackets, their, like, you know, hoodies, their whatever, right? And, like... I, I, I have never really noticed them before. They're just there. And I'm like, and not just fake pins, like all sorts of stuff. And people are like, collect, like they're like, they're everywhere. Right. And it kind of started, I think in San Diego when I was there, because we had some pins there too, that we were handing out. Right. Remember if you guys were there, there were some cool ones that went out. Um, just VV pins that we kind of put together and things. And uh, those were kind of fun. And then I'm like, well, there's the CGC 10 pin, mint pin, like that 10, like that graded pin. I'm like, I have to have that. And then they got the 247, they come over and write like, you know, and uh, Carl comes over and he's got like this whole display of like all their pins. And I'm like, suddenly I'm like pin crazy. (laughs) I'm like, oh, I got to get these pins. And now I'm on eBay looking at like fig pins, right? And I'm checking them all out. And it's just one of these things. Now I see them. It's like when you uh, are going to buy a car. I said this earlier, like when you're going to buy a car and, you know, you start seeing that car everywhere. Like maybe you're thinking about, oh, I want to buy this kind of model of car or something or whatever. And you you never really notice it. It's always been there. I just right. haven't seen it. And that's the thing I think is really cool about collecting is that you can get into something brand new and it can tie into like, like say if you like Spider-Man. You know, like there's Spider-Man pins, you know, or there's Spider-Man this or that or the other. So and then and then I think the power that we've been talking about internally is like once you have a community, like say there's the fig pin community and they're all, you know, into the same kind of IPs that I'm into, like same kind of like Marvel heroes or whoever else or whatever. And then that community is now seeing our stuff and we're seeing their stuff. And this is that that's how you kind of get that growth. Those when communities merge amongst uh, like with that common sort of like fandom there's a ton of power there and uh, i'm starting to see that so when i was there i was like just seeing people walking around and just people walking past who weren't even coming into the booth i'm like that person's got a jacket full of pins <laughs> it's amazing so, i don't know Aaron, just, when was it uh was yeah. it the 1980s when peanut butter and chocolate finally became a thing remember that tv commercial guy walking down the street with his walkman on with his yeah, spoon I do. And his jar of peanut butter, and he I bumps do. into the guy. Oh God, <laughs> I do. Hey, you I got do. your chocolate and my peanut butter. It's like, no, you got your peanut butter on my chocolate. And then I remember that. Like, oh, Reese's God. Pieces are born. <laughs> oh, I wish oh, I saw man. that. Yeah, now well, that's an historic uh, oh, moment. I'm gonna have to Google that. <laughs> you Google it. YouTube that one. It's that's classic, it. Right? And that's how it came together. Now we have peanut butter cups and everything. And that is how a mighty alliance was formed. <laughs> but uh, we have that's a funny too, Aaron. Oh, like one quick thing. Yeah, go on. When you were at San Diego Comic Con, right? What was your booth number? Was it one six three, I think, or something like that? Oh, that's six, that's uh, like I only six, remember from the New York one now. But yeah, yeah. I think it was six three three zero, and I'm like, yeah. hey. That's the first edition of Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> How did you guys do that? <laughs> it was all planned, Chris. It's it all planned. Was it 6330? Six, 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 three, three, 
I think it was six three three zero. Oh wow! Yeah. I thought that, that was sixty three that... March, right? See, there David it goes. Fought for that one. We well, moved actually... five times to get that. No, <laughs> no. Well, for, funny enough, for me, that actually hits personally for me because six three three zero is actually the postcode of my hometown. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> That's yeah. too cool. But yeah, uh, we... see, and there you go. You have a choice of six three three. What zero or six, you know, two nine eight? You went with six three three zero, right? The mints matter, right? There. Nice. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, up to the stage, we have uh, two uh, guest speakers, uh, two more guest speakers. We've got speakers rolling in left, right, and center. But we've got a uh, Vivi Magic and uh, Orange Bag Lady OBL. How are you both? Hello, hello. What's the crack, everybody? How are you going? So uh, I, th I think this is the first time I've actually had a chance to speak to you. So I've, I've always seen you listening there in the background, is and it? always appreciate your support. But yeah, thank you so much for coming to speak, and uh, and and, and oh, also to you. Sick. Of course, listen, Osman. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for for these spaces. They have been incredible uh, the whole time you've been doing it as well. But as Josh, this has been a, a fantastic space. What's happening, Magic? I see everybody. Who we got? Chris, Ben, Gurry, Sven, yeah. MC, Tills. What's happening, everybody? We got all the cool kids um, in there. <laughs> yeah man i just yeah, thanks again and i just wanted to hop up um and share a little bit of you got my vv verse uh tingles tingling when Ooh. when y'all were uh when, when y'all were talking about uh what's to come and um what what we're all excited about and yeah i, I haven't got the, the chance to talk to anybody yet about the demo either it was, <laughs> yeah it was exciting. It was really exciting. Um, and Tails, bro, we're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. That's it. Can you, you made it. it. We've made it. We have all officially made it. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to say congrats to the team um, for getting to this point. It's like, yeah, it's a monumentous uh, stage or chapter in this whole journey for you guys and for all of us as a community to uh, get the opportunity to level up, you know, our communication and our connection and our experience online. It's it's going to be really, really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, wait, uh, wait, 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 yeah, man. Ah, I knew I had one. <laughs> oh, dude, you! I gotta say, you have the best. I think I, I think I DM'd you saying you have the best soundboard in the game i know we have oh, a couple you. of soundboards but yeah yours is yours is taking the cake right no oh, well thank you thank you like you know i, I got so frustrated that, that uh, elon uh, didn't give me the ability to to have a soundboard uh, on actually hosting these spaces so i got so frustrated so i decided to make one <laughs> and uh, amazing it, amazing and uh, yeah. it's so crispy it's so crispy and you just drop it in at like the best the best little moments so no, yeah thank you shout thank out you. to you for that shout no, out thank to you for that Thank you. Uh, uh, Vivi Magic's had her hand up for a while there. Vivi, how, how, Miss, Miss Magic, how are you? Hello, I am so good. I'm looking forward to meeting you very shortly. Thank you, Osman and Josh, for a wonderful space. Um, I just came up quickly to say a couple of things because I have to jump into another space in a few minutes. Um, but I wanted to say, one, I am both flattered and um, mortified that Ben knows about the <laughs> mansion <laughs> one <laughs> um and number two my collectibles um i came up and rose my hand because of what you were saying because um yeah so i've talked a lot about pin collecting and disney enthusiasts and how avid of collectors they are when it comes to pin trading pin collecting knowing scarcity all the things like it's insane fandom and so my uh my thing is i've always been um semi-judgmental of them because they're like a very very specific fandom slash nerdum and so i've always <laughs> i love that logic <laughs> yeah that's good i like that i'm outing myself here guys i'm outing myself here so I've always had a, like a slight judgment, like I appreciate you, but you guys are intense. But now I kind of get it. And I'm like one of them because I have this lanyard and I have all these pins on it and now I'm wearing it and I'm one of them. 
<laughs> converted. I'm converted and I can't like I've appreciated them from afar, but I've also slightly judged them and I can't do that anymore because I'm now one of them. Yeah. But <laughs> I like that. It's like having like the, the, the power of the language, like feel the intenseness <laughs> of the pins of wash over you. And feel you guys, be born. <laughs> I, was just, I was putting my pin locks because I'm that nerdy. My pin locks on my on my lanyard because We've seen like uh, Metaverse Life. He lost um, his gold and silver logo off yes. his backpack. I almost lost my OG VV pin um, via one of the Discord moderators that arranged all that off of my backpack. Thankfully, it had one other. Um, it had like two um, pins, so one was holding still. But so I put these pin locks, and as I'm putting my pin locks on and arranging my lanyard for Las Vegas, I was like, God, I'm one of them. Ugh. Your 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 lanyard pin game, VV Magic, is elite. Right? I'm not gonna lie. Like you, there is not an empty space. And you know, there it's funny because when we were when we were in San Diego, right? I remember we were putting some of the pins on because that's what we were handing out some of the originals. Um, and I, you know, when you're wearing a lanyard and it's kind of light, and your name thing kind of flips around. So I took like the the VV Heart one, the the one that you know, the one from the summertime. And I, I put it on the bottom. So and, and I was like, oh, it's weighing it down. It's keeping it straight. And I had like one or two pins on there. And I hadn't like got into the pin game yet. But I've heard you talk about the Disney like side of the pin collecting before. Like I know I've we've talked. I've heard you you say that. So I got a couple on there. And then like, you know, you, you come down. Right. I still remember. Right. Like, cause, you know, and then like your, your lanyards are like nicely decorated. And, nicely decorated and i'm like oh i gotta step up my game here this isn't good enough so i stuck one in my hat you know i like put a pin in my hat and then when we got to new york city i thought okay i have like three or four pins now and you <laughs> your your lanyard was like oh dude like that was like elite so you know i have i have some ways to go but I've i've gotten some now you know i've gathered some so the next time i'm at a con like that i'll be able to you know kind of but they starts to get heavy, right? It's like wearing bling around your neck. Yeah, check out my chain. Mm. Yeah, no, it's this it's this weird conundrum that I I have been silently struggling with, but now you all know is I, I wear my pins with pride, but at the same time a bit of shame because I was that judgmental person and now I am that person. And so it's <laughs> That's surprising. That was going to be my question. What are your thoughts on the Disney pins? Because I've always, I've always loved them. Mm. No, I, I love them and I see them and and there's certain ones that speak to me. I just, I never really, I actually just had recently got into them by attending some of the cons and um, Yosef has gotten me a couple that like spoke to me, like the Headless Horseman, and sent me the them and she's gifted me a couple, but um, I just was always it, because for me it's another one of those slippery slopes. Like I have um, a family member who is a massive Disney collector that I try to get into VV. And I understand like it correlates with me because when I try to get them into VV, they were like, no, I'm an, I'm an 100 or zero kind of person. And like, if I get in, it's going to be too much. I already collect all these things. And I said, yeah, no, I get it. I'm not going to pressure you. And so that's kind of how I felt like with this whole pin thing is like, yeah, if I if I jump ship and 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 join the the cult, then it's gonna be it's gonna be bad. And yeah, already I've not even like been at the parks because I've been so busy, so I haven't been at the parks. But I'm now gonna be that person looking at all the pins at the parks. The one thing that I will say in terms of pin collecting that I did collect that I'm very very proud of because very few people own it is um the collection of the uh, Disney and Marvel comic covers. The first one they did for the Disney 100 where they did those oh. covers. Those, I didn't even realize it was that big of a deal, but I was a fan of um, some of the artists and just that collection in particular that I was able to complete that set. And I went back trying to complete um, another set for myself and for friends and family. And I couldn't. Um, it's, it was limited edition and it sold out super fast. So maybe that was like the gateway drug <laughs> into it is, was those pins. Cause those were the first that I really sought out, but yeah, since going to these different events and I, um, Max and Janie were so sweet because they, they found this great pin from, um, Marvel, the Marvel booth. And I didn't get to go around New York comic-con at all. 
Um, and I was like, oh man, I wish I knew I would have gone and gotten that. And so Max gifted me his and Janie kept hers. So I have like a Spider-Man that says New York. Nice. But yeah, no, I've, I've totally, yeah, I'm one of them now. <sighs> it is what it is. <laughs> Well, it's okay. So, like, like I say all the time, this is a this is a safe space. We can talk about things like uh, collecting, whether that be uh, physical, digital pins, Marvel, DC, Star Wars, all the other cool stuff as well. If you're in any other platforms, whether it be uh, Cryptoids, Candy, McFarlane, we're all for it here. That's what this uh, what the space is all about. Is uh, collecting, connecting with others, other like minded individuals, and anyone else who has a has a fandom they like to express. That's what the space is all about. And we always welcome everybody's uh, uh, opinions. Uh, there are collecting experiences and that's a, that's what it's all for so yeah this is this is great hearing stories like this we're having a fantastic episode oh i'm having a good one this one so well, you, when you, you, yeah when yeah, you yeah. start going down roads like that ozzy osmond uh and magic you you have to be careful because <laughs> i mean when i had my shop and i was selling all sorts of different things um pokemon was like just the cards themselves right it was like obviously a big a big thing i would always have like the latest couple of boxes in her, and i just knew I just knew if I opened a pack, which I did a couple times, <laughs> I opened a couple, I just knew, oh my God, if I go down this road, you know, and I'd already started going down other roads. Like, so, I, you know, comics and sports cards and then like vintage toys and all that. And, but in my shop, I had like a, a wall of Lego minifigures, you know, and, you know, I, I, I started to do that as like with a friend that I used to work with before I opened my shop in this design office I was in, him and I started to go, for, I don't know why, but we, we we would like we would go down to grab something to eat, and there was like a like a shop, um, and it had um, there's like a just like a drugstore or whatever, right? Like, and it had like um, Lego in there, you know. So we kind of like looking around, wasting time at lunch, yeah. and there's like the minifigure boxes started to come out, like you know the the the, the blind baggy minifigure boxes, right? Yeah. Came out those series, right? They're up to like I don't know what series they're on now, but. Um, when it first started to come out, I was like, well, those are cool, right? Like, like I like Lego, but I wasn't building Lego or anything. But, you know, Lego is like a big collecting thing. And I started to like, we, we would grab a couple of those little baggies and then we'd put, we'd stand them on our computers, like in our, my, the design office I worked at, you know, he would have like, um, we got like the little um, poster kind of um, putty, you know, that blue poster putty that you can use instead of tape or pins. And uh, so yeah. we, we take the blue poster putty, put it on the bottom of the little uh, Lego minifigure square that he would stand on or the character would stand on. We stick it on the top of our like iMac, you know, like on the computer because it was flat. Like when the iMacs were thicker, you know, they're now they're like paper thin, but you could stick those. So you'd have a whole kind of line up there. And all it was was eye candy, you know, when you're sitting at work and you're doing your thing and then you just look over at a minifigure and it just kind of, you know, it's just eye candy. It's just kind of fun, right? It doesn't. And so we started to kind of look for, oh, the new series is coming out now, right? So then we would go down there and I'm I'm literally like buying vintage Star Wars toys, like high-end graded stuff. And, and but then this was the funnest for me was like getting these minifigure boxes. And so then I started to go down that road and start looking for the scarce ones. You know, there's always the chase in every box. Mm -hmm. And then over time, when I ended up opening my store, I knew that there was a whole collecting community of just minifigures for Lego. So I opened up on my wall. I had a, uh, I started off with um, 150 minifigures, like that. You like I had these three cases of 50 each. I still have them in my office. If you so, if you look behind my videos before my channel, I would have uh, a, li a minifigure case, and that holds 50 right uniques. And mm -hmm. so uh, I ordered them from I don't know some display shop thing like online for years ago for my store. And I, I didn't sell them. I couldn't get rid of these cases because they're full of minifigures, right? So they're in my office. So I like, I, I you know, I had like, I started 150 on the wall. And so minifigure collectors would come in and every time that they would release a new series, I would get like three or four of the boxes. I would have them for sale, but I would open up a box and then I would just put them on the wall and then they would, you know, because there's chase ones you can't find, right? Like you'd have to go through. And so then it expanded to 300 minifigures because I had six of these cases on the wall because it was very popular in my little tiny shop. And but I was then collecting myself and I went down this total rabbit hole of minifigure collecting. Right. And it's like if I know myself, if I like with the pins, right, I'm seeing them and they're shiny. <laughs> you know, and they look good. Hey. And I'm like, oh no, right? Like, let's, this is now they're on VV, right? And of course, the pinnacle came out, that app came out, which piqued my interest a bit too. Um, so, yeah, like when you're a collector, you know, um, 
like, you know, all the IP is in Lego minifigs, right? Like all the IP I love. Mm -hmm. Same thing with pins and stuff too. So, you know, you can find another, um, another area, but I never, I never went into Pokemon because I knew if I did, it was, it would be graded just, cards. It would be like high end stuff and I do historical stuff. And I just, I had to step back up. and just watch other people do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, Josh, your hand up. I wanna, yeah, I want to ask MC a question about his shop, but how much time do you have, Oz? I don't want to get you in trouble here. No, no, mate. Like, I, I am more than happy to push you past Danger Zone. Like, this has been a fantastic episode. Like, <laughs> dude, go for it. I, ask your question. Okay. Because, um, yeah, I, you just made me think of a, a question I asked Ben, which was like how they manage, how Vivi manages all their relationships. I'm curious just to get your perspective on how you did the same with your shop, because like, how often were you like placing calls to like refill inventory and stuff like that? Like how many, how many relationships did you have to form to pretty much like keep what you had in store in store? Well, actually of on a, on a per like on a personal between collectors and uh, dealers, uh, I had lots of relationships, right. For vintage toys and um, the comic book dealers that I know I would take their back issues. Like I would take their, popular comics that weren't super high level like of spider-man batman and all these all the famous characters and i would i would take their like like long boxes of those and and then i would sell them for you know like three of them for five bucks and it would probably cost me about 20 cents a piece you know and they couldn't sell them because they were only into the big stuff like they could only really they were only really moving the graded stuff or the big key issues and stuff so i had a whole wall of just those kind of comics and they were all like the really fun covers and really popular characters and so um so that was like you know that's like getting to know other collectors and dealers like that own shops and stuff so i had lots of those relationships in terms of like um, like professional relationships with organizations, for example, like I had a merchant account with Sideshow Collectible. So uh, I had to um, order a certain amount per year there. I had to actually, you know, put in certain orders. I had to cover a certain amount. I had to prove that I was a brick and mortar shop. And, uh, and that relationship was pretty interesting because if I didn't order a certain amount per year, then I would lose that, you know, that would lose that relationship. But I also get access to stuff ahead of people. But at the same time, sideshow collectibles and hot toys and those kind of like, you know, if you guys don't know what they are, some people, they're the six scale, like large statue type figures mm -hmm. that are fully posable and high, super high end. So um, the only problem is that they would release, uh, so you could buy that uh, toy online uh, on their website and you buy about a year ahead of time. And so they would start shipping out to their online customers before they would ship to me, even as someone who was like, um, you know, like a store, right? Because they, they valued their online customer sales more than they valued working with small shops or big shops. So the only thing I could do then is I could beat them on price, right? So I could then like sell it for 15% cheaper than somebody could buy it online. And I would sell it at my store. They'd have to wait an extra month for it to come in. But a lot of the people I was like locally that I was like my customers that I had relationships with, they didn't really mind that much. They were willing to wait a month to save like, um, you know, 60, 70 bucks because whatever. So um, that was probably my own like real relationship with like a supplier like that. Other than that, you know, um, the vintage toy stuff that came from more like, you know, garage sales, dealers, small places. The Lego thing is interesting because Lego does not deal with small shops at all. Like Lego only deals with big, big kind of like mm. chains. You can't get like a merchant account with like Lego unless you have a a business that is like a significantly large. So in that, in that way, I had to actually go retail on that. And so I would, I would profit on retail from, um, from Lego by cracking boxes, you know, and taking the minifigures out of some of these sets. When somebody just wants a minifigure inside a starship set on like a star Wars set, they don't want to have to like, they don't want to buy the whole thing for 80, 90 bucks. Right. They just mm. want that one minifigure you could only get in that box. So I would buy a few of those boxes and I would try to do them on sale or I would try to do them like, uh, if they were on clearance and I would try to find, you know, these sets. And then I would sell the Lego individually after that, like someone would just want the starship or I would, so I would, I would, I would take all the profit out of the box that I could and strip it down, you know, like, mm -hmm. and so that's what these minifigure sets were really great because I could get a box, which 30 characters would come out or sorry, uh, 30 in the, in the box with like 12 characters. And there's always a chase in there. So I would crack a few boxes, put them all on the wall people were looking to complete the series. They didn't want to have to go to fight with other people to feel the baggies. 
So they would come to my shop and they would buy like, oh, I need that guy, that guy, that guy. And then they would do the rest just like blind boxing, right? So I had all sorts of strategies with my shop in terms of selling like all sorts of, you know, little things that I would do. And that's just the um, comics, Lego and, uh, and vintage toys. I sold a bunch of other stuff too, which is, but it was just a little shop, but it was a lot of fun. You know, five, no, six, I appreciate five six years or so I ran it. And then COVID came along and then mm -hmm. the neighborhood I was in was pretty, pretty hit hard. Yeah. Uh, and then a lot of social issues cropped into the neighborhood because stores shut down. My store was still open, but um, it became a place where a lot of drugs and a lot of crime started to kind of creep in because of the effects of COVID, which is really sad for that neighborhood because mm -hmm. it was a really old sort of boutique shop area. And so when I when everybody reopened, I had like main other stores that would also bring people into my onto my street, my area, like like next to me. Um, they were closed. And so it became like not a family friendly area anymore. So I made the choice in June 2021 to like close my shop and go back online because for about six, seven years before I opened my store, I was actually online mostly with through Instagram and eBay. So I just went back to that and I'm a graphic designer. So I just took my business into my home office because I was running my design business out of there too. So, so I ended up closing the shop, but then what happened at that moment is I found NBA top shop because now I was at home in an, in an office and I was just um, doing my graphic design, setting up my office and, and selling all my inventory of my, my toy shop online and just using my eBay shop and Instagram and all my connections. And then I was kind of looking around and uh, I'm a big basketball fan and I found Top Shot, you know, cause it was like an opening kind of card pack thing, like a digital card pack, but it was, you know, it's video. Yeah. And I didn't know what that was, you know, I was like, what the heck is this? And from some friends of mine. And then I had friends of mine tell me about um, Vivi in like the fall cause of the comic book thing. So I found the Vivi app and it's just kind of gone from there, right? But that's like a really quick nutshell of like 10 years of my life. <laughs> no, I appreciate you sharing that. Cause yeah, mm -hmm. that doesn't paint a picture of how many moving parts there really are. And I mean, you said it yourself, smaller business, one component of the business. So, um, no, thanks for that. Appreciate that. No, that's it. And, and, and look at, and look at where you are now. <laughs> now you're killing it. Yeah, no kidding. That is actually kind of crazy small shop like that now you're working with the company sitting in all the big executive meetings with the larger larger brands that's got to be surreal well i it you know it, it'd be really nice if we all could work in a job that we actually liked and when i was in my graphic design job i really liked my graphic design job i went to school for that that's what i've been doing for like 20 something years mm -hmm. literally and uh I remember going on vacation in the same neighborhood. I opened my shop. I worked at this office, super cool guy who I worked for. Um, we were kind of like, um, it was like a, I wasn't so much an employee cause I brought my clients there cause I ran my own business. Anyway, it was a nice partnership we had with a bunch of other staff and I went on vacation and I came back and I came back and I went to the door that I was going to go up to the office. And beside that door, there was a little, flower shop in like a really boutique little old building right this little teeny flower shop and it had been there for like i don't know 20 years or something and it was closed like it would it went out of business or something or they retired and it was this little empty space and i was looking at it and i was kind of looking for something different and i saw this little and i was like oh that's a that's a little shop like i i oh and i used to go down to i'm on the west coast of canada so i used to go down to portland seattle with um, little road trips and things and Victoria, Canada is a nice little town. And in Portland, there's a little shop called Billy Galaxy. And if you look the Billy Galaxies up, it's a vintage toy store and they're very famous and you can find them on eBay and all that. They would do deals around the world and everything. And Billy Galaxy was a little tiny shop that I went to. And that little tiny shop was like so successful and you know turned over so much inventory because I talked to the owner. Um, I thought, oh, I could do a little tiny toy shop, right? And I could actually just sit behind the desk and do my design business. So I would monetize my office space, right? Because I used to own, I used to rent office space before I joined that company. And it was just a cost of business. It was like I had a lease, I had an office, you know, and I wanted to like reduce the cost. So you either work from home or you do something else. So I, 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 I ran over to the, I found out who was like renting that property. I found out from not from the guy I was working with, because then that would have alarmed him that I was going to leave. But I found out and they were like, oh, yeah, OK. So I, it took me about a year of planning and that space got taken. But another space opened up nearby. And I was like, so I 
the, I still remember the day that I signed the lease and changed my life because I went from being a graphic designer in an office to like a, uh, a full-time like collectibles business owner and still a graphic designer. And I took the, the stuff I was always doing for other people, like designing their logos, designing their websites, all that stuff that I would do. And I did it for myself because I, for 20 years, I, or 15 years, I had been designing other, helping other people launch their businesses by giving them, you know, their design work, right? Like, you know, their, their branding, I did it for myself and it was a really fun project. So then I moved into that little shop and actually that owned the, my, the guy I was working with was super supportive about it. My family was really supportive about it, which really surprised me. I thought they were going to think I was insane, but that put me on the pathway of actually going into business and collectibles. And then it just kind of all led to where I'm at now, I suppose, like with mm. all sorts of different twists and turns. So, but you know, I love the collectible industry and, um, you know, I think I, I found a home in like, uh, in this industry, like in collectibles, you know, so it's, uh, it's a passion. <laughs> Sorry guys, like you don't get me talking about it. I'm not going to say any more. That's it. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Just, it, yeah. just one last question for my collectibles, maybe from me. Yeah. Um, my collectibles, do you already have the white dart fader now? The white dart fader minifigure? I, I don't have the white dart fader minifigure, no. I actually, my minifigure collecting slowed down a couple of years ago. Once I moved into my space, my back into my home space, because my cases on my wall are full. <laughs> like, you know, my, <laughs> my 300, you know, cases are full. And, um, so I actually, I actually stopped. Also my income went down for about six months there because I had to transition. So I, I haven't been up to, um, I haven't been up to the, the, the latest series on Darth Vader figures or Star Wars figures, but every single time we still have Toys R Us in Canada, right? So every single time I go to Toys R Us or anywhere around there, I looking at the minifigure boxes and it's like what we do with the mint numbers, you know, I'm literally looking at them and I'm like breaking down the cost of that box. I'm like, Oh, that's a nice set. That's $35 Canadian. There's seven minifigures in there. So I was charging $8 a minifigure on my wall, uh, Canadian currency. Right. So, but I was doing three for 20. So, then there's that little little ship in there okay i was i was that's five dollars on my so i'd be breaking down these like doing the math in my head even though i'm not doing that anymore <laughs> <laughs> i just can't help it mm. oh god but no yeah i i haven't i haven't uh, sometimes i'll buy a minifigure here or there that really stands out i bought there's a there's a more recent boba fett one i picked up but i have a boba fett display case so i had to and then the second nice. thing those uh, minifigures now they come in little boxes and you can scan the code on the box so you can see what's in it already so that's something new now well they used to have used to be able to have to feel them the most incredible thing i ever saw and not well in terms of lego okay there's lots of mm -hmm. other big things to see but <laughs> so you know it's kind of like an overstatement but um i was with my kids and we were in Vancouver and we were at this place called the kids only market. And Chris, you'd know this place down in Granville Island. It's been there forever. And I went there as a kid. I mean, what a magical place. It's just a big toy store, but like multiple stores. And so there's this place in there that they had minifigures and I, we were in there on vacation and my, I don't know, it was about five years ago or something like that. And uh, the newest series came out. And so there was one in there that my, we wanted. Right. And so, the person behind the counter was like, oh, you want that one? Oh, okay, I can find it for you. And I was like, really? What do you mean? And they're in the baggies, right? So I know that they have boxes now, like you said, so you can't actually do the feeling thing. But yeah, you can scan them. But so the person like literally like opened up a new box and then just started going through the baggies, like feeling it. Nope. Feeling mm -hmm. it. Nope. Feeling it. Nope. <laughs> feeling it. Nope. Oh, there it is. <laughs> like like within like a hat, they got so good at just feeling it blind and they could tell you what character it was. Yeah, right. so there's, yeah. So I would put them on the wall because when people would come into my store and they would start feeling the bags, it would, it would annoy me. I'd be like, don't, don't do that. Cause they're like, they're taking all the good ones out. Right. So I would just put the, the collection on the wall. And then if they wanted a bag, um, I wouldn't let, I wouldn't allow them to do the bag feel thing in my shop. Uh, they can do that at Walmart. 
Yeah, but not at my shop. I, you know, I'm a business. I was my own business owner. I could do what I wanted. So yeah, I was kind of like, no, we're keeping it pure here because if a kid comes in, they might land that good one. I don't want you coming through and taking all the good characters out of my box and there's something yeah. I'm left with garbage, right? So, um, anyway. So, so there was a sign in front of your door: "No bag feeling here in the shop." That's it. <laughs> yeah. People have put that. I've seen those signs in in different shops. That's it. But now they have them in the boxes. So, yeah. That's it. Don't touch my bag. <laughs> you know, you know, on that same level, you have Pokemon cards now, and they do CT scans of the packages to see whether you have a hit or not. Uh, so the 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 possibilities of searching what's in the pack they uh, improve day by day. That's it. Or if you got like a bent corner, apparently. Uh, Did you guys see that video yeah. that they posted of those people tearing that? Um that that uh pallet apart <laughs> somebody who was tweeting that in our community yeah the where one. they're all the pokemon boxes people were like oh. falling all over them going crazy <laughs> i think i did, did see them very very briefly but it looked like something like at like a black friday sale or something well like uh, like uh, it's a 151 pokemon set and they're now like for every pack you pay like 12 dollars and uh, they are restocked in some shops and uh, people know that and they just go scalp and buy everything and sell it online for double the price they bought it all right yeah very cool hey can i can i chime in here for one second yeah, of course um i completely forgot to say this earlier i feel kind of bad because he's not in the space anymore but it is notorious's birthday so is it if anyone wants to yeah if you guys want to send him a little dm and say happy birthday uh do well, that now. If, uh, if 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 Notorious does uh, listen to this uh, on the on the replay, maybe I do. I maybe have this for him. And happy birthday! <laughs> yeah, no, happy birthday, Notorious. So uh, thanks for thanks for taking the time to be in the space with us. Sorry you can't be here to to hear that, but uh, hopefully uh, you'll be catching this on the replay. And uh, yeah, we wish you a happy birthday and hope you're having a good one. And uh, on that note, guys, I do have to start thinking about uh, wrapping up the space soon because it is uh, getting towards uh, 11 o'clock here at night in the UK. And I do have a uh, a family that uh, does want to get a just degree of sleep because <laughs> I tend to make a little bit too much noise this time of night. But um, yes, but this has been a fantastic episode. So I started off doing like the usual VV talk thing and just covering what we usually do. And then all of a sudden it's spun out of control and we should be covering all these awesome, awesome topics ranging from mint, mint hunting to uh, uh, my collectible sharing is a uh, hit. His journey there with his shop and and uh, <laughs> man handling Lego bags, I love it. No, but it just goes to show you that anything can happen in these spaces. I love, I love it. It's a hi highlight of my week. I'm hosting these things. Uh, but uh, before I start uh, wrapping up, guys, I always like to give everyone the opportunity. Uh, if you've been living, listening out there in the background and you want to come up and say a few words or just say hi, um, just to yeah, if you want, to, if you something want to add or just are looking for a bit of confidence to speak in the space for the first time, you're more than welcome to. Um, that's what these spaces are all about, just uh, collecting, connecting with others, and uh, just enjoying the, the collecting experience and, uh, yeah, just uh, having fun along the way. Uh, but, yeah, guys, so, was, uh, so uh, I guess we'll, we'll start wrapping up the space. So, but, yeah, was there um, anything that anybody wanted to – final words, anything anyone wanted to leave us with? Uh, sorry, uh, uh, VV Magic didn't really get, get much of a chance to, to, to get a word in there, but I do appreciate you um, uh, <laughs> con con confessing, confessing uh, the, the how um, – uh, the, the the pins are sort of like a, converted you. I love I love it. It's a fantastic story. Yep, yep. I have to embrace it now. I suppose all good. No, I love collecting. It, that's it. Don't we all? We all we all love collecting. And that's what I love about collecting is that it's all about the personal journey. It's all, it's all about how it connects with you, and uh, that, that's what it's all about. Especially uh, in the comments here, I see Mahalo Joe. Uh, uh, posted a, a lanyard as well saying like i blame c cj for this <laughs> it's got like a lanyard pull of all these different pins i can see silver surfer the vv pins and all sorts of other cool stuff so yeah the... I, could say, I could say that i blame mahalo because i feel like you know maybe he was my gateway because he gifted me a really cool moon knight pen back in san diego and i think that may have been one of the first to start my lanyard so maybe it's mahalo. Uh, okay could be, could be. Well, I, my, my, Mahalo was listening down there in the background, so maybe, maybe it is him. Who knows? But I, I can see a, a, a Moonlight pin on this lanyard, so perhaps that is the Moonlight pin in question? Yep, that's the one. 
that's the one there you go <laughs> no i love it uh but yeah um so yeah i guess we'll we'll, we'll go around if anyone has any uh final words uh i guess we'll start with uh my my collectibles uh, mc thank you so much for uh, for, for coming to space and, and sharing uh, the, that story with us also um please um extend uh my thank yous to to ben as well unfortunately i'm, I'm not able to dm dm him directly um but yeah just uh tell him uh, thanks again for for dropping in um i'm not actually sure what what time it is in, in in new zealand but it must be early for him and uh, yeah hopefully uh, he, uh, hopefully yourself and, and and ben can come back again when you can well, I, it's, um, I think 11 or I think it's, I think it's noon or so in New Zealand. <laughs> uh, okay. I know like time, um, time tomorrow, travel. It's Monday for them. Okay. So this is Monday, like, you know, for, this is really interesting, right? So they're mm. in the future. I know. So, uh, no, thanks, man. I appreciate it. It was fun. I just wanted to pop up, say hi to you guys. And, uh, sorry, I went on and on, but, um, uh, no, no. Yeah. We have got we've got really cool stuff coming up this week. Uh, tomorrow there'll be a new character announcement dropped. You guys will see that reveal coming out. That's going to be a good drop, guaranteed. You guys are going to like it. Mm. And um, you know, there's going to be more stuff coming up and big, uh, really big like update coming up that you guys are going to like. So you know, stay tuned in, in regards to characters and collecting and how we do it. Ooh. And uh, that's going to be coming up. And of course, you know, as Ben was alluding to, you know. We'll, we'll, you'll see more VVverse stuff, obviously. So just from a VV side of things, but just for me, I really appreciate you guys hosting the spaces and um, we'll be, uh, we took a, we took a little, we had to take a little bit of a break last week in regards to uh, collapse and giveaways um, just because we, we, I mean, New York Comic Con, that whole first three weeks, we were just, it was awesome. We we're just trying to like give out as much as we could. So we kind of had to like get all that in order. I'm just, I'm telling you just honestly for me, like, um, there was so much to coordinate and um, all of those have gone out. If you won something on someone's channel or with VV or whatever, uh, and you, you, you can always reach out and ask, Oh, is it there yet? Because sometimes the notification doesn't come through when, when VV drop the giveaway team drops it into your account, like whatever prize you won. So, um, but that's all, that's all dealt with now. That's everything should be all taken care of. And everybody from October should have their prizes. You see some people are sharing them, which is cool. And, uh, and yeah, next week or this week, actually, we'll just start um, surprising and delighting is one of Ben's big phrases that he loves. And it's something that we've kind of um, taken on as a mantra in internally. Mm -hmm. So you'll see more of that in November, big time. So I'm pretty stoked about where we're going. I hope you guys are too. And um, stuff I've been waiting for for a long time um, in the position I'm in. And I know you guys have been as well. And it's going to take a little bit of time for a couple things to come full out. But uh, I think we're moving in a really good direction and we thank, you know, David and Dan and Ben hundred percent for that. Like the three mm. of them together. I know Ben's obviously more visual right now, but the three of them together internally have been really pushing things. And uh, I think it's just an amazing leadership team, just to be honest. Like, I think you guys are seeing it. So um, yeah. So just stay tuned. Yeah. Keep it going. Absolutely. And if you guys want to do collabs with Vivi, if you want like interviews or if you want, like to get together for things, just reach out. Um, a lot of people are reaching out. So the best way to do it is to reach out like to myself or to the team. If you have like something you want to do, like a show or an interview or a special thing you want to maybe get a collab with or a giveaway or anything like that, please reach out because there's a lot of people who have been reaching out and um, the best way to do it is to kind of do that. And then we can start trying to work with everybody and do some fun stuff together and kind of like just keep the momentum going. Ooh, I might just do that. I've, I've got a couple of my, my own ideas. So yeah, but again, uh, th thank you for that offer, uh, MC. I, I might might take you up on that. Yeah, it goes to everybody. You know, if you're out there and you wanna you wanna interact, you wanna collab, you wanna you know, just let us know what you're thinking, and we'll try to work with you, uh, the creators that are out there. You know, as best we can. Now, awesome. And uh, before we start wrapping things up, uh, we got a uh, Hinata's off the stage. Say, bro, how are you, mate? Hey, what's up, boss? Thanks for having me up. Uh, MC, I'd love to take you up on that offer by uh, collab collaborating with you guys in Vegas. If you guys can make the time, uh, I'd be really cool. Ooh, I hear also that, that there. <laughs> I also hear that there is a. Um, I heard the rumor about the the Magic Mansion. It, it was a rumor through the grapevine right there as well. But <laughs> it's good to be up here and uh, hanging out with you guys. Uh, MC, Magic, Chris, Gree, uh, Seven. Uh, 
Josh, really great interview with Ben. Uh, I really enjoyed that. And Oz, uh, yeah, thanks for having me up, guys. I just wanted to say thank you for the space. It's been a really good conversation. Um, and also, uh, I just completed my uh, my VV Heart logo set on the app, and I'm looking. I'm actively looking. And thank you, Magic. I know you uh, you saw my DM. I'm actively looking for a red fidge pin uh, to complete my fidgetal with the digital. Um, so if anyone's out there, you one way or the other, I I got you. No worries. Let's go. <laughs> thank you, Matt. All right. That's been settled. Let's go. But yeah, no, guys, I just wanted to say thanks for the space. And um, yeah, appreciate you all. Yes, sir. And Vegas says coming up. Ooh, exciting times. Yeah. Why is this Why is this the first time we're hearing about the mansion? What, what, what's up with that? Huh? Huh? Where are the invites? Huh? That's it. I didn't I didn't name it that. I think that was Emoji's fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Party of BB Magics. <laughs> Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Emojis fall. Emojis. Is Emoji going to Vegas? Yeah. yeah. Emoji's coming. He sure Wait. is. The FOMO got oh, him. I'm going to oh, DM him cool. now. He never told me that. He never told me that. <sighs> going up to the mansion. Hell yeah. Oh, man. What's the, uh, what's the date of Vegas for everybody so everybody knows? It's the event. When are you arriving? The event is the 15th through the 17th. The mansion is the 14th through the 18th. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I'm going to be there. <laughs> Wicked. Starting a little earlier. <laughs> That's it. I want my, 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 my wife to swing by and say hi. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Let's go. Excellent. All right, guys. Well, um, yeah, so I do have to start uh, wrapping up the space. Uh, BF, um, again, thanks, uh, everyone, for coming up to, to speaking. Um, let's go around. The, uh, Magic, just while you're here, um, any, anything you want to leave us with before we before we start closing out? Again, uh, thank you so much for coming up and, and speaking in the space. But always appreciated. And, uh, yeah, please, please come back again uh, if and when you can. Um, not much to add. Otherwise, uh, look forward to the next space. Um, always appreciate your guys' spaces. These are amazing and great chatting with you. Love listening in and looking forward to seeing all the fam in Vegas because it's okay that Vivi's not going to be there. The Vivi fam is going to show up and show out and we're still going to be doing some onboarding on our own. So I'm excited. That's it. Say so if Vivi can't come to the, can't come to decon, then we'll bring it to him. <laughs> when it comes smashing the door, say flying the Vivi flag is going to be great. Uh, but yeah, but uh, Chris, Chris, uh, anything you'd like to leave us with, Matt? And uh, congrat and uh, congratulations to you, sir. I do believe you just picked yourself up something very, very nice. I just did. See, this is the problem. I get in here and I start talking about pin numbers, then I go hunting, and then I find one. <laughs> um, That's it. But yeah, great space today. Thank you for everyone for coming, Aaron, Ben, everyone. And Anu, congrats on that set. That's a big deal. That's awesome to hear. Josh, great as always. Again, yeah, that interview was awesome, dude. You, you're just killing it. It's fan and everybody. Thanks for coming up. PV Magic, Orange Bag. What a, what a day. I, uh, I only had an hour today, but I've gone almost three. <laughs> nice. Almost. Had had, almost. <laughs> I think we set a record for a live stream on that first one we did. It was like four hours. But... Six. So six, six hours. Are oh you my going God. to Vegas, Chris? <laughs> Chris, are you going to Vegas? I can't make it. I'm in a uh, a tournament with my son's hockey team, but uh, uh, this is his last yeah. year playing. So, I mean, possibly next year things should open up a little bit more. So, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. That's all good, mate. Go, go to do the dad thing. Love it. Go do the dad thing. But, uh, yeah, yeah, but thank you, everyone, for coming out. This was a fun one, for sure. That's it. And for anyone who uh, who hasn't seen there in the comments, uh, Chris did pick himself up the uh, the Marvel Iron Man uh, Funko. It was a common, and he got uh, six three three. So very very nice. March sixty three. F A tales yep. of suspense thirty nine. Someone just floored that. So. So he's like, thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll we'll gladly take it. I'll take it. <laughs> That's it. Love it. Uh, Go around the space. Uh, Guri, anything you'd like to leave us with, mate, before we uh, start closing out? Yeah. Uh, great space. Thank you, everyone. And if you have uh, $5 in your pocket that's burning a hole and you want to give it away, find your nearest food bank and do so. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I 
True that. Um, yeah, always uh, try and give back when we can. And again, uh, Guri, thank you so much for those um, uh, pa- um, packages that you sent out uh, from uh, Japan. Um, like I said before, Doctor was very uh, grateful for his. I was extremely, extremely grateful for mine, and uh, also Chris was as well. So again, uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, Sven, anything you'd like to leave us with, mate, before we start closing out? No, no, very glad I joined uh, the space. No, mm, just eat your your vegetables every day. That's the only thing I wanted to say. <laughs> tell tell that to my kids. Well, my kids were right paying for that. <laughs> uh, and uh, and of course, uh, my fellow co-host uh, Josh. Again, uh, thank you so much for for being here uh, in this space with me and help me uh, facilitate this. It's been a fantastic space. And um, yeah, anything you'd like to leave us with, mate? I uh, know. I appreciate it. Appreciate all the kind words, everyone, about the interview. Um, just as always, thanks for the space. I was uh, I was over here battling scammers the entire flipping space. I was like, we had scam accounts trying to hop up on stage. I was like, nope, you're a marketing agency. Mm, Get out of here. I saw here. that one. You, you're trying to promote crypto exchanges. Get out of here. But uh, uh, no, it was a it was a it was a good space. So. I, I was a little bit disappointed because like I've been so long since I've used my Fidomatic three thousand. I just want just want to unload on something. <laughs> I was like, we we uh we have some important people in this space. Yeah. We gotta we gotta protect next them, time. So. Next time. Um, <laughs> no, it was uh it was a good space. Appreciate everyone who uh, who hopped up and uh, contributed, and we'll catch you next week. Yes, absolutely. And uh, again, thank you so much uh, uh, to uh, OBL for coming up and speaking. Uh, it was uh, great to actually uh, have a, a very uh, a very small chat with you. But um, hopefully, uh, we can come back and uh, and and have another uh, good ch- good old chinwag. It'd be nice, <laughs> of course. Uh, if if and when you can, uh, tails. Also, again, uh, thank you so much for coming up and, uh, and sharing uh, your uh, your uh, view on the Viviverse. Um, again, keep doing what you're doing with uh, what you're doing with Unreal Engine. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more uh, episodes with the with the aliens, uh, the, the the marine, and um, also what's uh, coming with uh, the, with the Gotham stuff you're doing with Batman. Um, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing, mate. Um, hopefully, um, I'll, I'll we'll be able to meet up in in, in, in real life, maybe up somewhere at the end of the month. We do have a bit of a a, a meetup happening in in London. Uh, hopefully, I'm trying to get get together at the end of the month. But stay tuned for that one. Uh, and again, a big thank you to uh, Mr. Ben Rose for for coming to the space and speaking with us. Um, always a pleasure to have him in here when and when he can. It's been a, been a great a great episode, guys. It's been really really good fun. And uh, for anyone who's uh, just uh, jumping in now. Uh, thank you so much for for tuning in. I've seen all the the cool kids there listening in the background. So I've seen the likes of who's been listening there lurking in the background. We've had the likes of Amelie. Amelie, thanks for listening in, mate. Always appreciate you holding down your spaces. And of course, like I always say, guys, um, if you can, please uh, support your your co- content creators. Um, a lot of us have got links to uh, buy me a coffee, which is a, a little way of, of of giving back and just saying thank you for all the hard work that we do to try and bring you these uh, these content cons- consistently. Um, I know. Uh, Emily's got one. Emoji's got one. I've got one. Doctor's got one. D's got one. Double Quill's got one. Uh, any other content creator I can't think of, if they've got one and, you, and you're able to use it and you feel inclined to do so, uh, just consider it. But at the very least, um, I always just appreciate everyone just coming and listening to the spacing and um, just enjoying the enjoying the space. That's, a, that's, 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 that's what really matters to me. Uh, and yeah, again, like I said, see all the cool kids listening in the background. See doctors listening with us. Doctor Rolex has been with us as well. Big supporters of the space. Casual, always a pleasure, mate. Davo, Mahalo, Joe, Dubes, Vibesman, always a pleasure to have you in the space, mate. And looking forward to meet, hopefully meeting up with you at the end of the month. Acrolyte, Vegan Things, Fried Labbits, and all these other fantastic people in the space that I could just love, love seeing you all here. And again, big thank you for everyone's uh, support. And on that note, guys, I better start wrapping up the space before I start getting angry phone calls from the missus above my head because he's probably trying to get some sleep. Uh, but, guys, yeah, um, if, you're, if you're just jumping in now, don't worry. This will be um, available on the Webby Collective's YouTube channel um, as soon as I get it to YouTube. So you've got to get the, the, the playback there. And, uh, again, big shout-out to the Webby Collective as well because that's uh, the collectors group that I'm – um, I just happen to be the the, the president of all, even though it's, it's just a, it's just a name. But um, uh, basically, WebV. So what is WebV? So WebV is just basically a collective space where we all all come together and just uh, collect and connect and enjoy the collecting experience. Just uh, share our collections, what we're into, all our different fandoms, all the way from uh, Marvel to Disney to Star Wars and just any other anything else in between. And uh, for anyone who's not familiar with it, and I've said it before, but I'll say it again, uh, the V in Web V Collective, uh, some people think it stands for VV, but it, um, it actually doesn't. It stands for value, and that's uh, what we're trying to, to just uh, bring to the space and do a little bit into pe- people's lives, a bit of, bit of value. And I think so far we're doing all right. And on that note, guys, I better say my good nights, my good, my good evenings, good mornings, wherever you might be in the world. 
Uh, I have been your your host, uh, Osman Collect sixty three. A big thank you to everyone who spoke in the space uh, this episode. Big thank you to everyone listening. Big big thank you to Collectors Gone Digital, Josh, uh, for helping me co-host the space. Please uh, uh, get over to his YouTube channel, give him a like, comment, subscribe, and all that other fun stuff, and check out his his interview with uh, Ben and all the other content that he puts out. And same with all the other content creators down there as well. And uh, yeah, guys, uh, we got a uh, we got Vegas coming up soon, so we got uh, two more spaces before before Vegas, and then yeah, it's going to be going to be into it. So it's going to be exciting times, and we got some fun stuff uh, coming from Vivi uh, in the future as well. I I did have uh, the 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 latest drops all lined up, and I was going to talk about all that, but we kind of got uh, lost in the other amazing uh, uh, conversation. But uh, stay tuned, guys, because yeah, it's a uh, it's it's going to be big, it's going to be wild, and uh, I'm definitely going to be here for it. And uh, yeah. So on that note, guys, I've been your host, Osmond Collect 63 uh, Take care, guys. Have a good one. This has been WebV Weekends Episode 53. Uh, yeah, take care. Have a good one, and we'll, we'll talk more soon.